Let us start our morning session. First speaker is Professor Nikolai Ivanovich Shakura. Title of his talk is presented mm -hmm. here. Today, I'll tell about the non-local magnetorotation instability. Yes, the, uh, usually uh, many uh, people use the local magnetorotation instability, and we consider the non-local. What is the difference? Uh, accretion disk, we have the problem of angular momentum transfer. In laminar disk, viscosity is not high enough to produce observable accretion rates. Possible mechanisms are turbulence and magnetic fields. Angular momentum grows with radius. Omega capital is Keplerian frequency, and, and disks are stable to small perturbations. A separate problem is how to sustain the developed turbulence in disk. Magnetic fields can effectively transfer angular momentum in differentially rotating flows with angular momentum increasing outwards and angular frequency decreasing outwards. Delikhov was the first and Chandrasekhar was the second in this problem. Uh, uh, Velikov and Chandrasekhar discard the magnetic rotational instability. The MRI was applied to astrophysical accretion disk in the influential paper by Balbus and Howley. And this then has been believed to be the driving angular momentum transfer in accretion disk. See Balbus Howley for review this paper. We use a non-local linear analysis of MRI in Kepler and accretion disk with radial angular velocity omega. In, in the non-local analysis, the dispersion equation, omega small as a function by vector k, contains the term depending on the radius, which is usually neglected in the local model analysis. Uh, here, I want to show the difference in the two approaches to the problem Left part, figure one, demonstrates the case of magnetic rotation instability originating between two cylinders, Velikov and Chandrasekhar, uh, considered his problem. In this case, the characteristic scale along the radius is much smaller than along the z-axis. The right panel demonstrates the case of the geometrically thin disk with magnetic accretion, bulbous and Howley. In this case, the thickness of the accretion disk along the z-coordinate is much smaller than the radius of accretion disk, standard accretion disk. Here, you see the basic equations describing the magnetic hydrodynamical flow. We have the mass conservation equation, number one, the air equation, including gravity force and Lorentz force, induction equation, and we consider the adiabatic perturbation uh, where uh, in this equation S is the entropy. We, we linearized non-local perturbation in, in this form. Uh, we have unperturbated UFI and uh, a perturbated component UR, UFI, UZ, uh, magnetic field B, B is equal to B0 plus B small, the uh, perturbation of, uh, of pressure, and is this approximation, we believe that uh, the density, uh, perturbation of density is equal to zero. Uh, uh, we uh, consider uh, this equation in an elastic approximation. When div, sorry, where div rho zero multiplied by U velocity is equal to zero. And 
we have the, this equation integrating our uh, symmetric density, we have the uh, distribution of density along the Z coordinate. And for n is equal uh, uh, is equal three uh, divided two uh, is convectively neutral mode. Uh, earlier equation uh, after the linearization, we have three equation for OR. OR, UFI, UZ. We have uh, in this equation, we have the uh, uh, kappa square. Kappa is the epicyclic frequency and CA square. CA square is uh, square of unperturbated Alvin velocity. Uh, we have also the, the three equation for magnetic fields from the induction equation for BR, BC, and BZ. Uh, and after, uh, uh, in the end, we receive the linear side equation for, uh, for BR. BR, this is, magnet, this is the, uh, BR is a magnetic field. And we have the equation of the second order. And uh, omega square is the uh, frequency of perturbation. And uh, omega square must be real number for a wide range of boundary condition. Uh, 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 the substitution psi in this form, we have the second order difference equation for perturbation in this form. Yet this is the equation uh, Schrodinger like uh, like equation with the energy is equal minus k z square. And potential, oh, this is the potential. Uh, we have uh, the potential in this form. And uh, we included usually this term absent. And we included this term in this equation. And uh, uh, we have the Schrodinger light equation in the. Uh, let us. Consider this equation. We have the Keplerian law. Sorry, Keplerian law. Uh, uh, we have characteristic points of this equation: the row points where the potential, where the potential, is equal zero, and we have the uh, turning point. R1 for E is equal minus K Z square and R E in this point is equal minus K Z square. Oh, uh, potential and characteristic points. R, R in, R in is the inner radius of the disk. R1 is the R1, R1 is the returning point, and R0, where potential is equal zero, R0. R0. And, uh, and we uh, show in this picture the first three energy levels. As in quantum mechanics, we have discrete uh, levels in this problem. Uh, 
Uh, here we introduce dimensional potential. U tilde and dimensional energy, E capital tilde. Uh, uh, let us consider dimensional less equation. We introduced we introduced the uh, variable x, uh, the ratio of radial coordinate to the point r zero, and also dimensional less e energy e and dimensional uh, uh, less the potential u and uh, in the turning points where e is equal u we have from this uh, cubic equation uh, for x1 x1 for the value x1 and uh, we have the uh, uh, solution for the uh, that we have the con uh, connection uh, between energy and point x1 uh, let us consider numerical solution of this equation we, uh, we must uh, uh, introduce boundary condition and for our problem, uh, when Velikov solved this problem, uh, he consider he consider the problem uh, for uh, cylinders where potential on x in is equal con discontinuity. Yeah. Uh, at the turning points psi to prime automatically psi to prime is equal zero and uh, need to define psi prime at this point a small difference between x and x minus equation uh, main equation reduced to area equation And we uh, solve this equation. Is the result? Oh, is the result of the solution? This is uh, uh, the Eigen modes. For different depths of our potential. In this case, we have the uh, shallow potential and x in is only one tenth one tenth you have only one level one level uh, and in shallow potential if x in is more than this quantity there are no stationary negative energy levels it uh, it is mri is absent when the potential is more depth then we have more levels in this case when x in is equal one uh, uh, hundreds we have five levels and uh, when we have more uh, more depths uh, of the potential for x in one thousands we have uh, 17 levels 17 levels Oh, now we show the solution in another coordinate along the uh, vertical axis. We have the uh, discrete energy levels of Schrodinger equation for different inner boundary x1 shown in the in in this plot. Huh? Oh, uh -huh. And uh, we have. Uh, only in this, only for uh, for this 
uh, case where the uh, we have uh, the uh, high energy and we in this region we have the uh, uh, lambda lambda is uh, is is uh, is is a way uh, lambda is equal to pi divided kz for this region is less than uh, thickness of the disk uh, hash and uh, the uh, this problem uh, for the uh, uh, take the place for the thin accretion disk in this region uh, the long of wave is uh, more than uh, than uh, thickness of the disk Next step is dispersion equation of the problem. Uh, dispersion equation we can produce from the definition of, rad uh, of radio zero of radio zero. Uh, in this equation, we have omega square in the square, and from this equation, we have by quadratic equation for omega square omega square and a solution of this equation have uh, this form trivial form and let us consider the uh, this equation oh we have the critical magnetic field we have the critical magnetic field critical Alvin velocity and this critical Alvin velocity corresponds to the neutral mode omega square is equal zero and this uh, takes the place when uh, the uh, ca to uh, uh, the ratio of ca to where phi at the point r zero in square is equal four it is we have the maximum Alvin velocity uh, that is equal for gm divided at r0. Let us normalize to this critical field our equation. Yes? yes. So, so I asked you during your talk because never to remember this page. Can you show previous page? Well, that's very interesting condition. Yes. Yes. What I see the sound sound velocity. No, no, no. So, uh, uh, C A Alvin velocity. Alvin velocity. In, in this approximation, uh, in this approximation, uh, sound velocity is uh, very very high, and yes. it's absolutely. I think it's impossible because uh, it is more than the uh, uh, two times than the escaping velocity of this point from black hole. Uh, you, you know that the Second cosmic velocity is equal to G. Uh, yes, yes, yes. What physical, sense? physical sense is next. If we have a magnetic field more than C square, yeah. the uh, instability, MRI instability, is absent. Yeah. Is absent. Right. Yes, of course, this velocity formula is more than uh, second. Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Escape, escape. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's escape, but uh, the magnetic field is uh, is constant, and formally the uh, force of magnetic field is equal to zero. 
uh, normalization. We have this equation in this form after uh, introduce omega capital in the R, R zero, and we can normalize also on the omega in uh, point R one, R one, and we have this equation. Uh, if we uh, introduce uh, C A is equal C A critical, omega is equal zero. Yes, of course, and uh, also this is uh, uh, omega zero, and uh, the different points of our flow. Let us consider short wavelength limit. This is a large E capital tilde and a small uh, position of, of point X1, X1. Yes, we have uh, for this condition, we have uh, so equation and uh, at low magnetic fields, at low magnetic fields, the uh, omega, the ratio of omega is uh, small to the omega capital in point R1 is minus 9 C8 and the ratio of C8 to the C8 critical in square, in square. And uh, 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 this omega ratio to the omega R1 in this equation reaches maximum at the point where uh, C A to the C A critical is equal uh, fi uh, five uh, tenths, and uh, the maximum stability. So, so. What the, what, the... Uh, what 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 is the stress of this? Uh, that, that means that that means that MRI is not very effective. Is not very effective for these parameters. Very low frequency. Very low frequency. But it's not so Yes. Uh, uh, Sin disk. Let us consider this problem uh, for sin accretion disk. And uh, we have uh, some manipulation with this energy. And after this, we receive the uh, critical magnetic field at the point R1, at the point R1. R1 is the uh, a point of uh, the point uh, of turning of uh, in equation. And uh, at this point, the ratio of C critical to the V uh, phi of wire one is uh, much less. We have the factor, uh, the thickness of the disk, the ratio of the thickness of the disk uh, to the radial coordinate in R1, R1. That, uh, we, if the magnetic field is more than this CA critical, the instability is absent, is absent. Uh, summary of new result. Uh, non-local non-local model analysis we perform and we include and we include this term in in local this term is absent in non-local this term takes a place and uh, we have the schrodinger like equation and we have and we recite the critical magnetic field at the point r0 a critical is equal for gm divided r0 it's the solution it's the eigen 
eigenmodes, and eigenmodes is for shallow potential, more uh, deeper potential, more deeper, we have uh, more uh, equation. And uh, this is the result uh, for, for uh, xn, log xn is equal minus four, minus four, very deep potential, very deep potential. And we uh, have a new result. We said the this equation, uh, dispersion equation in this form. And if we uh, uh, substitute CA is equal CA critical, uh, we have the uh, uh, omega square to the omega uh, uh, capital is equal zero, is equal zero. It's the uh, result of our solution. One mode plus this znak, this sign plus one mode uh, is oscillatory mode. And uh, this minus, we have only in this region, uh, if there is a region instability of MRI, in this region, the MRI is stable, is stable. In this region, omega square is, uh, is more than zero. Yes, we have some results. And uh, uh, Parker instability. We consider, we consider magnet rotation with stability. And yes, of course, this is stability of uh, very half and uh, Chandra Sikar. And uh, also Parker, American astrophysics, uh, many, many years ago, when uh, Virchow, it was, it were the times of Virchow and Chandrasekhar, uh, Parker uh, discovered the uh, instability in another situation when a uh, magnetic field is parallel to the plane of the disk. Yes, and we have some perturbations. If we have the buoyancy, buoyancy, uh, gas fall along the magnetic field, and uh, uh, and uh, it's very important for this instability, the uh, force of gravity. We must have the force of gravity from the uh, some central object, and uh, this is the Parker instability. Yes, uh, many people consider Parker instability. Uh, the presence of gravity is important for this process, so it can be called magnetogravity instability. Magnetogravity. Yeah, I think that we must. Uh, consider uh, separately uh, magnetic uh, 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 rotational instability and uh, magnetic gravity instability. Is uh, 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 this instability we have when the magnetic field uh, uh, we have the magnetic field along the plane of the disk. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. Простой вопрос задам, как наблюдатель и экспериментатор. А народному хозяйству ты можешь кратко сказать, вот, сказать, что это дает для э, дисковой отрезки и так далее? Это... А, Просто... Ну, uh, I want to say that the, 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 uh, uh, we have uh, yes uh, um, magnetic rotation instability uh, was introduced in astrophysics by Balbus and Howley, and uh, Balbus and Howley 
uh, did not consider uh, the they consider local instability local instability and we uh, add uh, the term uh, some term when uh, that was excluded in these papers and we have the restrictions some restrictions of the on the magnetic rotation stability we have the critical magnetic field as, as i remember clouds instability very important for the question of generation uh, magnetic field uh, maybe not yeah generation. yes 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 uh, yes said, yes we, we have we, we have some restrictions for this instability so, so we need to find uh, another stability. We have another. We have another uh, uh, dispersion equation. Yeah. I show. Yes. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Uh -huh. Other questions? Uh, uh, we have some new results. Uh, we did. We uh, we don't exclude the MRI in principle, but but. If there are no other questions, I would like to ask a question about uh, Velikov introduced this instability for, yeah. for, for plasma. Uh, yes. But uh, probably the idea, uh, what about experimental uh, issue in this direction? Because in principle, it looks like very simple, let us say, uh, uh, idea. So in this case, it may be checked. It was checked somewhere. Uh, experimental check. Experimental check. Uh, yes, uh, some um, results take uh, take the place, but 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 from experiment, I don't know. I don't know the work uh, where uh, yes, the uh, this in instability uh, were uh, discovered experimentally. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, but but, but okay. it's, it's trivial. This result now, it's, I, I have, uh, uh, I have doubt. <laughs> I, I, I did I not, I, I don't uh, doubt the uh, village of instability takes the place, especially in the situation with cylinder. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's also, I would like to add that Visnavati uh, Kogan, he has to be chair of this session. Uh, I think he discussed uh, MI, MI yeah. instability uh, before Balbus and Holly because he wanted to explain supernova explosion with yeah. this instability no, the, for many years, since uh, 1970. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, um, uh, no, no, Nikolaj, uh, uh, super, no, yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Let us thank again. Один доклад я поведу, извиняюсь, потому что так получилось. Так, что такое? Почему так много народу в поле зрения со мной? Я должен быть тут один. Я хочу сказать по-русски сначала, что вот выступал перед нами один из самых крупных и реально оставшихся вот на настоящий момент классиков науки, астрофизики. Он будет сейчас спорить, это я все это знаю. Но, конечно, вот этот пустой зал... Особенно молодежь, которая сегодня не пришла прямо поддержать его. Человек, ну я не буду говорить, что он на переливании крови находится уже третий-четвертый месяц. Это, вот. Такая наука не может вообще иметь будущего. Вот те люди, которые не пришли сегодня, должны понимать. Я молодежи говорю, надо их иногда воспитывать, потому что... Ну как... Наука не состоит из одних формул. Вот хотя человек показывает одни формулы, это большое одолжение делает вам. Хорошо, братцы, меня попросили провести эту сессию, видите, я не удержался, потому что сам докладчик поскромничал и решил не руководить собой. Я предоставляю слово.
Александру Федоровичу Захарову, очень известному человеку в нашей стране. Я считаю, один из лучших специалистов про полилитивистской астрофизики. Полилитивистская астрофизика может быть не неправильной космологии, но извините, но астрофизика тут уж, если кого надо спрашивать, то надо спрашивать Александра Федоровича. Thank you very much. Could I start? So, thank you very much. Uh, it's a title of my talk is uh, presented here. So, it's, uh, it's could I use mountains? Bigger. So, you, you see that uh, recently uh, James Webb space uh, astronomers presented very nice uh, very nice very nice pictures first pictures and here you see they showed also the fast uh, uh, galaxies uh, presented here and they also showed very nice arcs uh, these arcs are demonstrating uh, gravitational lensing in action and also at these press conferences which are many famous astronomers from Europe and the United States try to explain why gravity is extended stretching yeah. these images but it's but it's for me it was not a satisfactory explanation and also they show this uh, nice images of this with the same redshift scale it's the same images of the same objects because it's uh, it's uh, my, my, my book and also here it's a very simple explanation why gravity is stretching images. If we consider Schwarzschild lenses, so in this source you see it's a stretching of these images, it's quite natural explanation. And also here I'd like to, to say that uh, many years ago, more than 20 years ago, Vladimir Mikhailovich in, uh, invited me to submit a popular book, a uh, popular article in uh, Soros journal and uh, here you see it's also this image why it's uh, gravity stretching images Can you read me some of your very useful book for this? yes yes it's yes, yes. this book yes um, Russian, <laughs> book very very useful Yes, but now I would like to, to emphasize this. Now, uh, due to, uh, let us say, activity of James Webb Space Telescope, it's uh, uh, gravitational lensing studies uh, is just is coming in new stage of these uh, these investigations. Uh, uh, let us let us uh, also a picture of different uh, way to discover black holes. Uh, we could monitor trajectories of bright stars, or we could uh, investigate shadow of black holes. And also gravitational, lens, uh, gravitational waves is a way to discover uh, binary black holes. It's as it was discussed also at these conferences. But also uh, here I'd like to emphasize that there is a great success of relativistic astrophysics. Three Nobel Prize in the last five years. Uh, given for investigations of in uh, gravity and astrophysics LIGO Virgo, gravity and Keck uh, 2020 and also due to discovery of relativistic precession. Mm -hmm. Astronomers believe that there are black holes in center of many galaxies and uh, that is you see our galaxy uh, in center of our galaxy that is different ways to, to investigate and to evaluate black hole mass in the center of our galaxies and also one of the most natural way to in, uh, investigate and to, to discover black holes or compact uh, massive objects in the center of our galaxy just to monitor, to monitor stars it's uh, like uh, to trace uh, gravity around the uh, galactic center many years ago more than two, uh, 40 years ago martin rees uh, evaluated mass in our galactic center it has to be around five million solar masses and also uh, uh, Genzel, Towns and other people investigated different uh, opportunity to evaluate masses of, uh, 
of uh, black hole in galactic center. And the important component of these studies was adaptive optic techniques. It's a Nobel Prize uh, Committee uh, Foundation presented this picture, how to, uh, let us say, to detect so sharply images of, uh, of these stars, bright stars, because we have to use some small uh, mirrors and after that, after the action of these small mirrors, we have flat wave wavefront. In this case, we improved our angular resolution in 10 to the five times. That is illustration how uh, adaptive optic techniques uh, could improve the angular resolution with li for light, uh, large telescopes. For future 30 meters telescope, this 30 meters telescope is installing now in Hawaii. It's consortium uh, of uh, California, in uh, Indian, China, Chinese, China, and Japan uh, astronomers. It's also illustration of Keck telescope. You see here, it's a laser, laser beam. Its laser beam is used to create artificial star to test turbulence in atmosphere. It's also a list of largest telescope in the world. It's slightly old, but one of the uh, most important problem for uh, 39 meters telescope is, uh, which is co constructed now in Chile. It's own, let us say, main telescope for European ESO. European South Observatory is uh, also a way to improve trajectory of bright star. It's uh, also uh, for uh, VLT telescopes. Now they are acting and they are operating in regime of interferometer and they reach uh, excellent angular resolution uh, in infrared band uh, gravity. And for four years, uh, PI of this experiment, Eisenhower, uh, said that is they reached angular resolution with few uh, micro arcs, few dozen of micro arc seconds. Uh, uh, a few words about theory about uh, extended mass distribution. You know that it is, there is a relativistic precession, but if there is a uh, extended mass distribution, in this case you have shift in opposite direction in respect to relativistic one. That is this case. If you only 10% of mass is an extended mass distribution, you have shift in opposite direction. In this case, there is a very strong constraint on extended mass distribution uh, in stellar cluster or dark matter. In this case, we could constrain uh, dark matter concentration in uh, near the galactic center, as it was shown here in this picture. Because we have no shift in, in negative relation. And also we could constrain alternative theories of gravity. In last years, people suggested so many alternative theories of gravity to explain dark matter and dark energy phenomenon as a uh, gravity effect. Uh, so, and also Yukawa potential. We see many alternative theories of gravity predicted Yukawa potential as a weak field approximation for for gravity. And also in this case, we could constrain this uh, Yukawa potential. So, and also Yukawa potential could fit S2 star. I will show you this trajectory of this S2 star even better than Newtonian potential because Yukawa potential also could explain relativistic redshift. Massive graviton theories. You know, uh, you, you rem probably uh, all the generation remember uh, former uh, rector of Moscow State University, Logunov studies, uh, theories with massive graviton. And also you see uh, many other people considered massive graviton theories. And also recently, Claudia Deram and her co-authors introduced gravity theory when there are no ghosts. In this case, it started to be like attractive theory. And the, in the first paper of LIGO Virgo experiment, <clears throat> these people not only presented not only uh, binary black holes, gravitational waves, but they also constrain graviton mass. Graviton mass is around 1.6, 10 to the minus 22 EV. Uh, so it's rather small number, but later it was improved. This estimate in 10 times roughly. But uh, 
But important thing that analyzing trajectories of bright stars, we could evaluate gravity of mass. It's also a very attractive feature of astronomy. From astronomical observations, we could evaluate parameters, masses of graviton. But important thing that is, uh, this estimate is uh, almost the same as LIGO Virgo ex, uh, estimate. And also here is, you could see here, that is, that is our estimate of graviton mass. Keck people, they, in this period, uh, including Andrea Getz and her co-authors, uh, used this idea and also the but the new data and they slightly improved our estimate of graviton mass. But also for them it was very important because they had te technical problems to, to build new 30 meters telescope in Hawaii. So, and also that is, I uh, guess, his, uh, his and uh, other uh, in Andre Getz paper, but also we considered opportunity to improve graviton mass estimate with future observations and it was done assuming that in future observations predictions of general relativity will be will be confirmed but also other theories with tidal charge maybe maybe uh, constraint also about ex uh, experimental uh, let us say detection of relativistic effects with keck and uh, gravity observations detection of gravitational redshift as it was shown here so uh, S2 star passed the closest approach to galactic center in May 2018. And, uh, and here you see it's practically it's a repetition of famous Eddington experiment. Uh, that is observational data for redshift. Uh, thin uh, black line corresponds to Newtonian uh, model for relativistic redshift. And the red curve corresponds to first post-Newtonian uh, correction for this parameter. And in this case, Newtonian model has to be rejected. But important thing that in last period, people suggested so many alternative theories of gravity. In the, some theories of gravity, you have no universal law for gravity. In different system, you have, have to use different systems, uh, different gravity. And gravity, so that is the estimate, and they very precisely evaluate distance to the galactic center and mass of uh, in the in the in the black hole. So what F parameter corresponds to relativistic correction. F zero corresponds to Newtonian gravity. F one corresponds to first post Newtonian correction. Keck uh, people also uh, practically confirmed these uh, these observations and also published this paper in this direction. And also some alternatives for gravity theories were considered by gravity people in this, and they quoted our nine papers in this direction. Relativistic precession was discovered by gravity perturbation. And you see, it's very beautiful. It's in press release, they show this picture. And practically, we could say that uh, S2 star demonstrate relativistic precession for this case. Everything is one, uh, fine, but also important thing that now we have to emphasize that extended mass this distribution is less than 1% for these cases. But also important thing that uh, uh, subject is variation of fundamental constant and uh, Keck people also investigated this issue as a, as a function of redshifts. Uh, also important thing that I uh, would like to uh, we are proud that we are we, our a constraint on graviton mass were included in a particle data group uh, and also together with LIGO Virgo and other experiments it's very very fine and also I would like to remind uh, all three views of, by Vitaly Ginsburg uh, on physics of lifetime and about the importance of problems what is important for for physics. I read, I saw this picture in, uh, not pictures, this book, booklet, in many libraries, including Italian one, and also, with, for instance, my co-authors, Italian co-authors studied this review, but uh, he listed some important problems, so including uh, gravitational waves, black holes, dark matter, dark energy, and here, so connection of galactic center puzzle is with the Ginsburg problems, black holes, cosmic strings, quasars, galactic nuclei, formation of galaxy, problem of dark, dark matter. And also, one year ago, 
Uh, it was an online meeting, Marcel Grossman meeting, and it was a Saturday round table, subject of uh, uh, Galactic Center, and two alternatives, supermassive black hole or rare model for that matter, and uh, two opponents, uh, Ramo Ruffini organized this. Gensel said that is, oh, any theoretical model must uh, show Schwarzschild explosion for S2. Alternative model, it's extended mass distribution, dark matter. And also they show this picture. And after that, it was very intensive support of mass media of this alternative model for that, for galactic center. This dark matter, it's uh, some list of this model. And these people showed that uh, the re in center of galaxy, there is a dark matter concentration with constant density. It's very fine because it's in this case, Theoretical model is nice. It's maybe used for analytical expression. Also, other people suggested this kind of models. And in this case, uh, so you see, it's a list of these pictures. Because observations are showing us that uh, all uh, uh, bounded orbits are closed. In this case, a theory is saying us that there are only two potential where the all bounded orbits are closed. It's harmonical oscillator and Newtonian potential. But in dark matter uh, concentration, for dark matter concentration, we have a case where we have harmonic oscillation. That is the most uh, popular potential in physics. And also this uh, was considered by Arnold book. And also you see uh, angle between periester and pericenter is for harmonic oscillation, pi over two, but for Newtonian potential is pi. So it means it's, we have elliptical law and a sketch of these trajectories. And here you see, it's again, it's a two star orbit. Uh, so, and practically it's also interesting thing that you could find a very interesting uh, booklet uh, written by Arnold. Uh, here remind that this problem about motion of body inside Earth was considered by Gook and uh, Newton. And Newton said that is, that is trajectory of, uh, of body inside, inside Earth. <clears throat> but in principle, it's a problem is how, do, what about trajectory of star inside dark, uh, dark matter? It has to be this one. And it has to be this one. It was uh, presented by Hook. So it means in for the galactic center, again, Hook met, met Newton. And uh, we have to conclude that galactic center potential must be very close to Newtonian one. And so practically it was confirmed. And mass concentration in dark, uh, center, uh, dark in galactic center, constraint is very strong. It's uh, and, uh, because it has to be very close to uh, Newtonian potential. And also it's illustrated in this picture, very nice images of trajectories of bright stars. I, will, I have to accelerate because for to be accelerated. And also you see, uh, Event Horizon Telescope reconstructed images of black holes for the Guitarius uh, A star and M87 stars, observed in April 2017. Uh, our proposal, more than 18 years ago, we proposed how to test general relativity uh, this probably radio strong because, but uh, we, 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 have, we have not too many, too much exp optimistic to detect the shadow with radio strong because there is a scattering of uh, radiation at this wavelength. But we're supposed to use the test general prediction about shape and size of black hole. And we wrote, practically we wrote that shadow around galactic center may be detected uh, with a, VLBI in millimeter or sub millimeter, sub millimeter VLBI technique, as it was done by Event Horizon Telescope. And also, uh, for 18 years, what is a uh, black hole? You know, uh, for 18 years, I was repeating black holes for observers, black holes are black, dark spots, shadows. You know, there is uh, some program, uh, popular program, black holes and white spots, черные дыры и белые пятна. Так вот, 
I am saying black holes for observers are oh, black dark spots. It's like definition. And really, and I promoted this idea in many conferences in different in different countries. But it was really also you see that is picture. It's a classification of different orbits. And also we showed that this uh, paper published uh, 17 years ago. So for position of uh, distant observer in equatorial plane, you see that is uh, extremely rotating black hole. The dashed line, dashed line corresponds to Schwarzschild case. It's well known from textbooks, classical textbooks. Uh, but for polar position of, of distant observer is a very weak dependence on spin. But also it's very popular. And also you see in Chandra Sekar book, here also you remember, uh, he reproduced this picture for equatorial position of distant observer. But he assumed uh, in this uh, consideration, he assumed that there is a dark, uh, there is a bright uh, screen behind the black hole. And where is behind uh, bright screen behind the black hole? Uh, because size is very small, is a uh, 15, 50 microarcsec. But also Bardin early in 70 uh, presented this picture in his in his article, famous article. Uh, James Bardin passed away uh, around, uh, slightly more than a month months ago. But also important thing that for uh, Reisner nursery metric. There is analytical expression size of shadow is a functional charge, and also we presented these pictures, and also it was gene generalized for case of tidal charge. We showed this picture. It's a, it's a event horizon telescope network, and also they showed constraint on charge different metrics. But here you see blue curve corresponds to Reisner nursery metric, and there is analytical expression for this case. And also for this key picture, you see, that is uh, a loud region, gray region, a loud region for parameters uh, of uh, to explain observational data. And size of shadow for in this case. In this case, it's acceptable case. But here is, it has to be ruled out. And also, uh, we show that is for M87, we have to use only these parameters for tidal charge, green region. But these uh, red parameters have to be rejected. And also, that is discovery of shadow around the uh, Sagittarius A. I'm finishing. It's, uh, it's a very accurate estimate of size of shadow for these cases uh, in May. And that is estimate of, of parameters for shadow for these cases. Uh, one minute for wrong pictures of black holes, you see. Why this picture? I am repeating why it's wrong pictures. Many people are using it still now. For instance, Russian Wikipedia is using this wrong picture. Why it's wrong? You cannot be hidden behind no black hole. Uh, he is also wrong. And even Carl Schwarzschild meeting in, in uh, Frankfurt uh, University, it was, they used this picture. And even at the Event Horizon Telescope team, they used this picture. You important thing that you cannot be hidden behind a black hole because very strong deflection of light. Uh, so I will leave these conclusions here, and I would like to thank uh, audience for for listening. Thank you very much, Vladimir Mikhailovich. I will address. Как тут нажать? А, все нажато, по-моему. Да, нажато. Я выпустил. Возьмите, чтобы он был. Так, вопрос. Или за Или за Или за Или за Или Здравствуйте. Я хотел бы э, узнать, вот э, уже было две презентации изображений черных дыр. Да. Э, вот, э, собственно, даже на семинаре Бориса Яковлевича Зельдовича имени э, было тоже у нас, как говорится, доклады. Э, вот. То, что они заявляют, мы правда, вот, как говорится, видим именно их заявление? Или все-таки это не совсем то? 
Ну, вы знаете, их заявление, я не знаю, что люди э, заявляли, потому что тут э, множество всяких нюансов, э, и, и требует много, многое, что требует уточнений. Когда мы... Э, давайте я скажу вот что, важную вещь, которую просто из-за отсутствия времени я не подчеркнул. Общая теория относительности предсказывает, что у вас будет темное пятно такое. И... Сейчас, простите. То я хочу еще лист вниз. Бэкап слайд. Да, да. Значит, общая теория относительности предсказывает, что у вас должно быть темное пятно внутри. Это утверждение практически не зависит от того, какой у вас экран и где у вас находятся источники. То есть вот если у вас, если у вас вот здесь вот, о, простите, да, ух ты, е-мое, сейчас, простите, о. It's very important we wait a minute. Да, да. This more. Да, да. да. Don't touch. Да, пополни. Ага. Да зачем ты мышка? Ты просто расширил. Да не, 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 все, все, все. все, все. Вот, а, а, Лук, а, посмотрите. Значит, а, важная вещь, что вот, предположим, у вас есть источник вот здесь. И вот этот источник создает вторичное изображение вблизи этой тени. И, и только когда у вас э, аккреционный диск до последней устойчивой от, орбиты, это замывается, потому что, ну, картина немножко другая. Я вам покажу, как, какая, какая она будет. Сейчас покажу. Вот, сейчас смотрите, вот это вот шварши, а вот это вот пир, э, почти экстремально. Это карта красного смещения. То есть вот эта вот часть синее смещение, это на нас движется. Да. Но вот эта тень становится, видите, она замывается, вот это вот только темненькое пятно остается. Mm -hmm. вот. Но этот случай, он исключительный. И, скажем, Кипторн, когда для Интерстеллар картинки показал, они взяли, чтобы с этой хреномутией вот не рассуждать, они взяли и обрезали аккреционный диск. И тогда у них получается вот близко вот к этой картинке. Ну, 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 да, ну, 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 да, но вот это вот, а, в отличие от нашей картинки, мы считали, что какая-то реальная плоскость непрозрачна. Если считать, что она прозрачна, есть еще вот такая душка. А это вот тень. И это утверждение, это только о то, поскольку наш, несмотря на гигантские усилия аккреционные, исследования аккреционных процессов, нет, что называется, стандартной мод модели, как все происходит, как происходит окрец. Окрец – сложная вещь. Да, да, так вот, а вот, но важная вещь, что вот эти коллаборации M80, uh, Horizon, для М87 и Sagittarius A, по сути, подтвердили вот это вот наличие вот этой тем области, темной области. А темная область очень маленькая, ее размер 50, 50 для э, э, галактического центра, 50 микроарксикон. Важная вещь, интерферометры разрешения, да, вот если почитать эти статьи важно, 25 микроарксикон. 25. И они разрешили. Ну, если пиксель, но у них не пиксели, это интерферометр. Да, да, да. Так вот, казалось бы, это недостижимо. А в начале, когда они планировали эту задачу, оценки массы была меньше в два раза. И они говорили, у нас тень 30 микросекунд, а угловое разрешение 25. И они были очень, так сказать, ну, настроены пессимисти. И важная вещь, опять, это наземный телескоп 1,3 мм. Вы не можете улучшить, не уменьшив длину волны. То есть это все что можно... И вот и они эту задачу решили. Ну, это я для кофе-брейка рассказываю более длинно. Вы можете и здесь посомневаться, это вопрос вашего... Нет, нет, ну вот, собственно, а что... Ваше пожелание. Я люблю, как я это
вопросы, где обсуждаются как погамы. А, вот еще важная вещь, важная вещь-то. В наблюдениях в астрономии мы не можем увидеть темноту, дакенос. Мы можем увидеть только яркие структуры. Так вот, теория, ну теория практически любая, говорит, что вокруг этой тени должна быть яркая структура, потому да. что это каустика, огибающее да. семейство лучей. И какие бы модели вы ни рассмотрели, у вас возникают вот эти вот яркие структуры. И вот эти яркие структуры определяют нам, а что там в тени. У меня я ведущий. Я не разрешаю. Не разрешаю. Не разрешаю. Ну так вы тогда не а почему там три источника в изображении черной дыры в нашей галактике, ярких, светлых пятна? А, это, вы знаете, тут очень сложно. Значит, важная вещь, в отличие от М87, где масса 6,5 6, 6 миллиардов солнечных масс, здесь масса 4 миллиона. И орбитальный период, всего 13 минут, может быть, у ближайших э, уиска. Э, от 13 до 18 минут, минуты. То есть этот орбитальный период меньше, чем время экспозиции. И там такая кухня, э, понимаете, э, когда они, они как-то, вот эти орбитальные периоды движения материи внутри, внутри их изображений, они это все учли. Это понадобилось э, коллаборации в 400 человек 5 лет. Ну, это это дело, дело, конечно. Но вот наверное, чего-либо не является подтверждением, потому что отсутствие электрических проводов не найдено в климате, не означает, что там была мини-связь. Но я так понимаю логику тех, которые нам про это говорят, что на самом деле вот отсутствие, ну ребят, отсутствие, например, тут же Кроме якобы изгодующих здесь материализуется Николай Семенович Кардашов, который мне тоже постучал в голову, если бы он был жив, он бы тут же позвонил в первый ряд. ряд. Ну, ну кому? В данном случае только мне, наверное, он вам звонил, звонил Николай Иванович, звонил нет. тебе, нет? А мне он иногда, иногда позвонил, позвонил и просил упомянуть, что не забывайте, что это может быть родовая нора. В этом смысле я ближе... Я лично ближе... К тому, когда, когда критерию Шварцмана, он это, это такой между собой, в группе Зельдуича, Шварцман признавал эффектом черной дыры, дыры вернее, нет, доказательством существования черной дыры, только открытие эффекта такого, такого который присутствует только для черной дыры. дыры. А, а вот для кротовой дыры, дыры какая-то какая а, Значит, для кротовой, на это, а, а у меня есть. А, а, значит, а, такие работы ведутся. И ну, для каких-то моделей кротовых нор появилось теоретические представления о том, как должна выглядеть тень. Так в каких-то моделях есть тень, в каких-то нет. Ну, то есть вот эта вот деятельность ведется. Но следует заметить, что мы еще в самом начале, это самое грубое приближение. Удивительная вещь вот здесь, Владимир Михайлович тоже сомневался, мы видим в галактическом центре почти соси, что вообще-то удивительно изображение, почти соси. То есть, ну, казалось бы, мы должны... Соси, смысле... Оси, вот, ну, вот этого спин еще оценить вообще невозможно. Да. Ну, аккреционного течения вот То этого... Ну, грубо говоря, да. Ну, да, это, это, между прочим, наблюдалось в каких-то галактиках, просто там очень большие масштабы. Ну, вот, а, вот, это, вот это, но это, парам, это, параметры, мы массу можем оценить, спин еще нет. Вот, и что, ну, чтобы оценить спин, надо 
порядок еще улучшить угловое разрешение. Но, но важный вид. Некоторые альтернативные теории гравитации уже сейчас можно отбросить. Понятно. Понятно. Я, Я еще, еще последний скажу, что, что когда-то предлагался метод, метод доказательства черной дыры, такие процессы идут, идут только в черной дыры. Ну, например, в черной дыре может быть эргосфера. И, и там, там может идти процесс, процесс пенроуза. Да. Ну, допустим, у вас идет распад, распад пенезон или, или там чего угодно на две частицы. Вы знаете энергию начальную, и после, после распада оказывается, если этот распад да, 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 если у вас керовская черная дыра, то этот распад приводит к чему? Потому что распадающие частицы будут иметь большую энергию, чем та частица, которая распадалась. Вот это то, возможно, только в эргосфере. А как это с эргосферой вокруг кратовой дыры? Не, но там все совсем другая жизнь. Вот, да, поэтому, поэтому все эти утверждения, они Но только... Понимаю, да не, не, то, не только, не только, тут важно подчеркнуть, не только с кротовыми норами другая жизнь, даже с голыми сингулярностями другая жизнь. Понятно. Вот, то есть, то есть голый, есть класс голых сингулярностей, большой, где тени нет. Ну ладно, давайте поаплодируем. Да. А у нас два докладчика. Да, Александр Федорович, передаю вам хорошее управление. Спасибо. Спасибо. Uh, uh, next is... Uh, one. Okay. Что будет, если китайцы там Следующий one. One. Мы тут но вы у него спросили, где его доклад? Никак. Тогда давайте так. Покажите телефон, да? Нет, 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 пусть он это самое перешлет доклад, а ты на тачке, да, начинаем на сам У тебя есть что-то? Окей. Сори, сори, по интерапшн, но... Uh, we will uh, change. Включен? Uh, uh, ребята, вы этим занимаетесь там, выходите на связь, мы в 21 веке. Uh, Интернет вам не отключил никто, uh, вы не можете с ним связаться. Подождите, Владимир Две секунды, подождите. Да нет, внятно скажите, он может транслировать экран? Нет. Он может загрузить доклад? ничего не ответил. Это надо кому-то этим заняться. Просто я послала доклад Даниле, я не вижу его у Данила в почте. Вы ее сочетаете? Next speaker is... О, замечательно. А, это Ксио А, окей, Ксио. Yeah. One. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Okay. Can we? Are you ready? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, okay, I'm go. ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Shaobu Wang from Tsinghua University. So uh, today I'm very really happy to uh, introduce uh, our project is a Chinua Market Tube Scope for Survey. Uh, okay, uh, I, uh, first I will spend uh, a few minutes to introduce the background 
And there I will introduce the preliminary results uh, of our uh, projects uh, have been uh, treated over the past two years. And uh, I will uh, introduce some uh, highlight uh, results. Okay, uh, everybody knows that there are a lot of uh, plant based uh, wide field survey projects, uh, including uh, Master, ZTF, Atlas, Pan Stars, and uh, Assassin, UMTS, and uh, the projects I'm uh, talking about today, TMTS. Uh, all of these facilities have very uh, wide field view, so it can uh, monitor the sky uh, very efficiently. Okay, so uh, what kind of science you do with this wide field facility depends on the the prime resolution or the cadence that you uh, use to uh, monitor the sky. So uh, for supernova science, uh, uh, people monitor the sky every few days or uh, a few weeks when you can uh, capture a lot of a uh, supernova. But if you want to science uh, for objects that evolve very quickly, for example, the gamma ray burst and the uh, uh, flare stars and the uh, period of arrivals, then you need to uh, uh, improve the, the, the frequency uh, that you want the sky. With the development of the CCD detector, the CMOS detector, actually we can uh, monitor the sky and uh, really uh, with, uh, with a very high uh, speed. The science uh, for alternative service, including, uh, for example, uh, the, the flare star CV and the uh, blobs or some uh, short pure eclipsing binaries. For example, uh, the two white dwarfs uh, with, with a, a operating period less than one hour, uh, it will produce uh, a significant rotational wave signals, uh, which can be detected by feature uh, LISA and uh, other uh, gravitational uh, uh, gravitational wave experiments uh, like Taiji and Tianjin that uh, is going to be conducted in China. And also uh, some other uh, interesting signs uh, that will be related to the high cadence surveys. So the project I'm uh, talking about today uh, is uh, a project uh, uh, led by Tsinghua University. So uh, our telescopes just locate uh, in Tsinghua Station, uh, not far from, uh, in, uh, from Beijing, a uh, two and a half hour driving from Beijing. So you can see this is uh, where our telescopes locate. Uh, just not far from our telescope, there is a very uh, huge telescope with almost uh, used for a uh, uh, spectroscope survey for uh, wide, uh, wide field of sky. Uh, for each each exposure can cover four thousand uh, spectra of four thousand stars. So uh, the uh, optical system of our telescope, it is a modified Hamilton uh, system. So combined with a 4K CMOS detector, uh, 
it can have a uh, 4.5 square degrees for each tube. That's the uh, CMOS detector that we use, this QFY detector. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, spatial resolution is uh, 1.86 arc second per pixel. In CMOS detector, actually, we can uh, have the sub second exposure and very fast put out. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, observational system uh, of TMTS. Uh, usually, we, we uh, can have two most observations. Uh, if we want to uh, maximize our field of view, we use a uh, luminous filter. In that case, we can have 18 square degrees for four tubes. Otherwise, if we use GMR, uh, Filters when we can uh, appear to be of nine square degrees. Uh, in that case, we, we can have the, the G and R and other at the same time for uh, all of objects that uh, we monitored. So that's uh, the, the picture of our telescopes. Uh, actually, was a, a, a boot. Uh, we, we install a hood to uh, to uh, to reduce the, the effect from the moonlight. Okay, this is the CCD the most detector. Uh, all of these telescopes are also robotic. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is the the whole sky camera shows the, the picture of our. Uh, uh, for the observation of our telescope. So we, we, we got some test for our images. For the gray light, uh, we, we can have a, a photometric precision uh, at different uh, amplitudes. For example, uh, uh, we, we can achieve 19.5 uh, magnitudes uh, with the three sigma uh, arrow for one minute exposure uh, at a great, great night. Uh, at a big moonlight, on a big moonlight, that the uh, detection limit uh, is about 18.5 uh, magnitude. So uh, in the early of this program, we spent some time to discover the supernova. For example, uh, this is a supernova to uh, this is spectra and this spectra is a type two P supernova. But uh, it's still located at the same site as the Lamos telescope, uh, as it can uh, obtain a spectra of four thousand stars. So, it provides uh, over 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, 20 million spectra uh, over the past uh, uh, few years. So uh, we changed our uh, strategy of observation to monitor the, the LAMA sky area because the LAMA sky area has a a field of view of 20 degrees, square degrees. It is comparable to our uh, field of view, for example, 18 square degrees. And also, we have similar, similar uh, limited magnitudes. So, uh, the, since 2020, uh, TMTS has been used to scan the LAMOS uh, plates. Uh, in that case, we can obtain both uh, spectral light curves for the Topics in the common fields. So, as you can see, the, the Lamas is a very large uh, telescope. Uh, uh, the TMTS can provide a uh, uh, photometry for the Lamas objects. Or, in other words, 
uh, most of our TMTS objects can have a lot of the spectrum. So we can benefit from each other. Uh, we for our, uh, co coordinate uh, survey. For example, uh, we can use uh, data from LAMOS and the TMTS to search binaries of compact stars. The, the line of size velocity from LAMOS spectra can provide, uh, uh, for example, the, the velocity parameter. And the TMTS line curves can provide the uh, orbit, orbit period. In that case, uh, the data, the combination of the data allow us to search binaries of compact So that's the introduction of the background. And uh, I will introduce then I will introduce the preliminary results of the so over the past two years, we have monitored over 300 a similar area. Uh, for each of them, have repeated observations of at least uh, 120 times for each uh, area. So the, the color of different the, the different color shows the the number of repeated uh, experiments. So, for example, the sky area uh, has uh, repeated uh, observation of for, for uh, about. Uh, uh, 10, 000, uh, about 1,000 times. That means uh, it, it, it can it has been uh, monitored for uh, continuous maybe eight hours or ten hours. Something like this. For the cadence, you can see that it's ten seconds, and we, we combine uh, ten seconds images to one to uh, to get a, a higher signal. That's the uh, photometric uh, precision of team test light curves. So you can see for the five stars, it can have a uh, uh, one percent uh, uh, photometric precision or better than one percent. So, uh, for example, 0 0.5 or 5 uh, magnitudes precision. Uh, for the five stars, we have a uh, uh, for, for example, for uh, 18 magnitude, you have a precision for the magnitude. And the right of the right, we, we show the comparison of our light curve with tests. The upper panel shows the test light curve for the same objects, and this is TMTS light curve. You can see we, we have a better a precision than than tests, especially for the faint stars. And this shows, our diagram shows the distribution of uh, TMTS revivals in the binary discovered over the past two years, more than uh, 10,000 uh, stars with very good light curves, continuous uh, light curves. You can see most of them are data speedy stars and eclipse bios, and a few of them are in CV. Uh, and this shows the distribution of the period of the of this, the five stars. You can see most of them have a period around uh, two, 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 five, two to five hours. That is related with the strategy of our survey. This shows the part of the light curves. For example, the in binaries, you can see the light curve is very smooth and it's very well done. And most of the light curves can be used for uh, asteroids as uh, neurological uh, analysis. Uh, this shows the uh, light curves of some pulsating stars and the uh, one AM star. This shows the light curve of some uh, flare stars and uh, other uh, period stars.
so uh, we, we got some statistics that the micro database from um, over two years. We uh, identified uh, more than 10,000 uh, periodic uh, revivals, including uh, over 6,000 eclipsing binaries and 4,000 data splitting stars. Among, among them, uh, about 4,000. We, uh, four thousand of them uh, uh, has been uh, already uh, identified by the SX catalog. That means sixty percent of them are newly discovered. Okay. That's the distribution of different uh, uh, variables or eclipsing binaries. Uh, actually, uh, we, we are most interested in those uh, periodic arrivals with periods shorter than two hours. And we identify uh, about 1,000 short period sources. We, most of them are data security stars, as you can uh, expect. And a few of them, a few percent of them, uh, are not that has good stars, so they are noticing, including uh, short period binos, ZZ setting series, uh, sub dwarf, and the uh, black. So, uh, here I show uh, some uh, very interesting uh, uh, short period. Uh, revival stars. For example, this uh, 18.5 minute uh, blue uh, large amplitude pulsator. Okay, it's a newly discovered uh, object uh, by Ogo project in 2017, uh, published in the Nature Astronomy. So this is another another short period uh, object, 16.5 minute ZZ30 stars. This is the combined folded light curves. So you can see that the, the period is, is, is very uh, prominent. And also, uh, uh, the, uh, we identified a 1.8 hour uh, super hum in the CV and uh, one and an hour uh, ellipsoidal revivals. So you can see the light curve has been uh, distorted by the companion star. Uh, uh, the most interesting maybe this one is a G-type of dwarf star. We identified a five minutes period, uh, periodic city. So that's very strange. Also, uh, we checked the ZTF uh, Atlas data. We identify. So the five minutes period does exist, okay? Okay, I, I will give some uh, brief uh, introduction of the most interesting science that uh, we have uh, been done. So one is about uh, the blab that I just mentioned. The blab uh, means the blue large amplitude pulsators. They're located in the, this region of the HR diagram. So you can see it is, is uh, brighter than uh, sub dwarf stars. So you have the uh, uh, magnitudes about uh, one to two, uh, two, two magnitudes, absolute magnitudes. So uh, such kind of uh, pulsators are extremely rare. Ogo project has monitored, uh, for example, monitored one billion stars for 20 years and they only discovered 14 labs. Uh, so according to the sample discovered by Ogo, so people uh, and the ZDF, people divide the labs into two subclasses. Uh, one is the uh, high uh, amplitude, um, uh, sorry, uh, the, the labs usually have a very uh, large uh, amplitude and short rate, for example, the the uh, amplitude is larger than 0.2 magnitudes, and the uh, period is uh, uh, 
it was around 20 to uh, 40 minutes. But the ZTF uh, just discovered uh, a few uh, black candidates with uh, uh, periods shorter than 10 minutes. So that maybe uh, means there are two, two classes of uh, blacks. So uh, this work uh, actually it, it, it is a it, it is a complete work chain from discovery, data reduction, analysis, and mining, and uh, follow up observation, and uh, uh, the result of the spectroscopy from Keck telescope and uh, simulation from uh, uh, MESA models, and then we uh, identify a new model for the peculiar black discovered by TMTS. So uh, this black actually can be identified uh, uh, from images uh, taken by two tubes of TMTS. Uh, for example, the, on December 24, it, it can be identified uh, from uh, tube one images. Uh, uh, the next uh, evening, uh, it, it, it was identified by uh, uh, tube two of Team TS. So it has an uh, eighteen point five minute uh, period. Uh, it has a source sort two shaped light curves. So this is uh, represent the faded light curves from the uh, full up uh, observation of this uh, TMTS black. So you can see it is very blue, has a B minus R color of minus point four uh, seven and uh, MG uh, is 1.4 magnitudes. So both of them are consistent with uh, a classification of black. And also uh, we, we show this black, TMTF black, in this diet, in this uh, plot. Uh, this uh, the, uh, horizon axis works at the period in the unit of minutes. Uh, the vertical uh, uh, axis represent the amplitude. Uh, so you can see this uh, color uh, data represent the identify, uh, confirmed blacks. The gray open uh, symbols represent the candidates from uh, uh, different projects. For example, the 14 uh, ogle blacks that's uh, represented by the blue squares and the four high gravity blacks from ZTF and one test black. Uh, this is the test black, right? So, and the, uh, the star represents the team test black. So, uh, uh, as uh, I just mentioned, that blacks can be divided into subclasses according to the spectral features. For example, uh, one subclass uh, shows uh, high gravity uh, line features, and other group shows uh, low gravity and uh, with a longer period. And also the spectra shows prominent uh, hidden uh, features. So the TMTS black, you can see we just locate uh, in between the, the high gravity and the classical blacks. So it's located in the intermediate region of these two uh, subclasses of black, blacks. Uh, we we uh, took a full spec Keck spectra for this black, and uh, by anal analyzing the, the, the spectra, we uh, we can determine the temperature and the surface gravity and the luminosity. So we confirm that from the uh, different phase of the spectra, we confirm that TMTS black is uh, actually is a classical black, but at the shortest period end. And uh, uh, according to the, uh, the, the, the change in the radio velocity, because the change in the radio velocity it just proceed uh, the change in surface breath and uh, surface gravity by about a quarter of the position period. So that means that this black actually uh, it belongs to a radio mode as a pulsating belongs to a radio mode. OK, 
Okay, so actually, this step has a, a long term monitor data from uh, Atlas and the ZTF. Uh, so, uh, by uh, analyzing the, uh, the long period uh, data, uh, we, for example, we use the weighted wavelet Z uh, transform uh, analysis uh, uh, method. Uh, we determine that uh, this gap show uh, uh, a, a radar period change. For example, p dot over p uh, is 2.5 uh, e uh, uh, So it, it shows a, a positive, a large positive uh, uh, rate of a period change. So that's unusual for for gaps. Uh, we also do an uh, O minus C tigering. Uh, we found the O minus C uh, curve uh, shows also shows a, a, a positive, a large positive uh, rate of period change. For example, is two point two. Uh, this uh, this rate of period change is actually is much larger. Is much higher than the rates derived for other blasts, actually by uh, about an order of magnitudes. So this challenging uh, theories uh, for the existing uh, uh, theories for uh, blasts. For example, one of them is uh, helium core pre white dwarfs. The other one is uh, core helium burning soft dwarfs. Actually, both of these. Uh, Scenarios they just predict a very really, really low uh, rate of change, much lower than the uh, the value we derive for team tips black one. Uh, after correcting for the uh, period of change, so you can see the light curves, uh, uh, the profiles of the four D light curves are very really, uh, coherent. This is the ZDF of uh, our band. This is Atlas O band. This uh, it does not uh, correct for the uh, rate of uh, period change. This is corrected for the rate of period change. You can see uh, the performance of the phone line has uh, becomes uh, very coherent. So finally, uh, we uh, run some uh, stellar evolution models. Uh, Actually, we confirm that uh, our gaps, the star, you can see this is the period change. This is the period. So for other gaps, you can see they show very uh, marginal period changes. Uh, but the team tips, uh, black one, show a very large period of change. So it cannot be explained uh, by either a uh, hidden core pre wide off uh, scenario or core hidden burning uh, sub of scenario. So neither of them can explain the, uh, the high rate of period change uh, detected in TMTS one. So actually we propose another scenario, that's the, the share hidden burning uh, scenario, uh, proposed to use to explain the, the behavior that we uh, detected in TMTS one. For example, we we run some models and find that uh, a scenario is a uh, 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 sub star with a mass of point, uh, point 0.7 solar mass and the uh, helium share uh, with a mass of point oh one one solar mass can uh, explain can explain the 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 the, the the weird behavior shown by TMTS black one. So actually, we finally conclude uh, TMTS black one is at a short lived phase of a uh, shear uh, helium ignition before stable uh, shear helium burning. So, in other words, we, we, we can say that TMTS black one is going through a uh, 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 has brown gap of uh, subdwarfs.
Okay, there are also uh, other some interesting signs from TMTS. For example, the new ZC set is discovered. We got some uh, uh, analysis, for example, from the uh, analysis of uh, astro seismological analysis and determine the parameter of this white of star. It's a really uh, normal carbon oxygen wolf. Also, there are some uh, many flares discovered by uh, TMTS because of the high cadence, so we can capture the fast rise and the decline phase of these flare stars. And we can get better uh, fitting for the, uh, the evolution of different light profiles. Uh, because we, we have a spectra from uh, LAMOST, so actually we, we can do uh, uh, interesting uh, statistic uh, studies for uh, flare samples. Okay, so uh, the last slide that I want to talk is about our future plane. So uh, this is a, a double a 60 centimeter uh, prime focus telescope that we put in the uh, northern, uh, southern northern uh, region of China. But it is at a very high, uh, uh, it has a very high uh, altitudes. 4,700 uh, meters high. So it has a field of view of uh, 18 square degrees and uh, deeper than TMTS by 1.5 magnitudes. For example, G band can reach 20 magnitudes. Uh, it has a very large, field, a large uh, CMOS detector, uh, high speed CMOS detector. So you can see the quantum efficiency is very high. So the science, uh, we are focused on the uh, eclipsing a uh, wide drop system and uh, supernova and other interesting signs. Okay, I, I, I will stop here. Uh, sorry for the, uh, using uh, more time. Okay, uh, I already finished. Okay, thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. We have still time for a few questions. Vladimir Khalsh. Okay. Uh, I have two small questions. The first, maybe yes, no, you can answer. Uh, this uh, very interesting uh, short periodic blue stars, helium stars. Is this, I'm right if I say that this uh, instability connected with the negative thermal capacity of the stars? Can you repeat? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, we know that the, uh, in low massive stars evolution, when the central nuclear come to the helium nuclear come to the helium ignition, the ignition is unstable due to the negative capacity. Negative capacity of the plasma in the gravitational field. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 yeah, I can explain this, this, uh, so in this world. Mm -hmm. Actually, for this object, we, we do some uh, astro seismological analysis. So, uh, Yes, uh, during the phase of uh, Shahidi uh, evolution, so the the pulsation the pulsation uh, can be triggered. Actually, can be triggered, uh, but uh, only for some uh, specific models, but not all models. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, can, can I ask you, you can you say us, uh, several words about your CCD SMOS, which you use? Mm -hmm. That is a standard CCD. Uh, standard. Uh, 
the Union uh, CCD of Team TS project? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the system for TMTS project is uh, uh, 40, 40 uh, QHY CMOS, not CC, CMOS detector. So it has a, a quantum efficiency, a quantum efficiency of about seventy uh, percent. Not, not not very high efficient. So. But uh, the, the the CMOS detector we will be uh, uh, we will use in, in our next project uh, we will have very really high uh, content efficiency. Yeah. So about uh, ninety percent. The CMOS detector. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let us think. Speak again. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Thank you. And last uh, speaker of this session uh, will be Natasha Turina, uh, master, master uh, in South Africa. Okay, good. Uh, I will tell uh, about Master Sal and Master Iak. Vladimir Mikhailovich, you will say the slow. This our objectives were bounded in uh, 2014 and 2015 years. This is our uh, uh, master style was mounted during two weeks in December 2014, and uh, master up uh, was mounted in a half of a year in May 2015 as a part of master global robotic network. Uh, there are some pictures from uh, mount project of Master Air. Uh, the main process to mount it is was like with a cabinet and a dress and a bit of a uh, There are our people at the observatory. Uh, in several weeks, uh, His Majesty Philip VI uh, of Spain. Uh, arrived to inauguration of master telescope and several other telescopes at data observatory. Um, from the main result from master EAC, uh, main results are the following. Uh, the discovery of the for the vegetative optical polarization of reality. Uh, the main result is the discovery yeah. of strong optical uh, The main result is the discovery of prompt optical polarization of uh, optical emission of gamma ray bursts. Uh, an example of GRB. 16, uh, 625V and other. 
the main is the following. We observed this GRB with main master uh, and with uh, master very wide field cameras. So we had both and polarization measurements and uh, measurements of uh, optical flurry evolution. This result was published in Nature. Uh, from the main authors are uh, master. Uh, there is a picture of discovery of polarization of prompt optical emission of this optical counterpart of GRB. The next uh, main one of main results at Master EAC is uh, V404 signal uh, polarization variability detection uh, between the observations uh, in 2015 years where this micro Kuvazar um, was in bright active state. Uh, here you can see uh, the optical variability polarization episode uh, that was observed at Master Kislavodsk and Master Tonka uh, at one of episodes of optical uh, of our detection. Uh, and you see that when uh, Microquasar uh, down in uh, luminosity, uh, the variability of polarization is gross. Uh, the third uh, main results are GRB search at Master EAC. Uh, from uh, several hundreds uh, error boxes, um, investigation from uh, different satellites like Swift, Fermi, Integral, Maxi, Lomonosov, et other, uh, we will uh, demonstrate several optical transients that were detected were and were discovered at Master EAC. Uh, the names of optical counterparts uh, are marked by red. The names of GRB and the main uh, GCN circulars are here. From this uh, optical counterparts of GRB, uh, there was one, all of them are interesting. Uh, one of them, one from them was in spiral galaxy. Just a moment. Yeah. Uh, 172005A, uh, it was swift trigger. And at this position, uh, we see uh, optical counterparts and we see also supernova uh, after 10 days. We observed a lot of GRB and don't remember everything. Uh, this is one of uh, GRB uh, whose optical counterpart was found in a Fermilat error box. And here our master EAC and master SAO uh, light curve. Mm. Uh, this GRB was observed uh, also by uh, SWIFT, also by uh, GECAM, uh, China satellite GECAM. And uh, there is uh, observation, our observation we made at Master EAC, Master SAO, Master OAFA in Argentina, and Master Kislavodsk in Russia. Uh, the fourth uh, main results of Master EAC and Master SAO are the input to uh, LIGO Virga uh, optical support made by Master. Uh, here you can see um, the cover maps of some of uh, alerts uh, that were made in during or one or two or three epochs of uh, LIGO Virga uh, observational sets. Uh, as you see, Master uh, made uh, the most input to optical support, to optical coverage of every alerts, there were about uh, 100 uh, gravitational wave alerts, more than uh, 75. 
uh, and all of them we are observed by master. Uh, after coverage, we analyzed uh, all optical transients that were detected by our after detection system and uh, published some of them in GCN, some of them in ATEL, and uh, one of main papers are in press now. Uh, here is the example of uh, two uh, gravitational wave alerts and coverage map by MasterNet, including Master EAC and Master SAO. Master EAC uh, made uh, one of the most input in Northern Hemisphere, and the Master SAO made uh, one of the most input in Southern Hemisphere, like, uh, uh, together with Master EAC. Here are the examples of optical transient discovered by uh, Master EAC. This is the high amplitude outburst of uh, Dwarf Nova. Uh, and it is, it has classification as Dwarf Nova in Vizier and in AFSO and was discovered by Master Arc in 2020 as example. Mm, uh, there is uh, another uh, Dwarf Nova that was uh, discovered by Master Arc uh, like a supernova candidate because you can see uh, a galaxy near it. Uh, Liverpool telescope made uh, a spectrum for this candidate, our candidate, and classified as as Dwarf Nova. Between more than 300 and a half uh, optical transients discovered by MasterNet, uh, Master Eck and Master Sao made uh, very important input. This is one of types uh, of discovered by master uh, optical transient. Uh, there are quasar flares, blazar flares, um, supernova flares, uh, dwarf nova nova outburst, uh, GRB optical counterparts, kila nova, uh, over city types, uh, uh, and uh, moving object like potentially hazardous asteroids and uh, comets. There is a uh, quasar flurry. Uh, here you can see oversetti type flurries that uh, we uh, find uh, at, during our survey. Uh, they has uh, the limiting time of uh, of of, uh, of their being in bright uh, stage, and we have their light curves. From uh, all optical transients, the most input is Dwarf Nova outburst. And here you can see the example of our potential hazardous asteroids and comets discovered at Master, uh, all Master Telescope, including Master SAO and Master EAC. And there is a comet uh, that was discovered by Master Auto Detection System. Uh, in 2016 uh, at Master EAC. This was the first comet discovered there. Uh, here you can see uh, the comet discovered at Master SAO, uh, our first comet there, uh, first and the brightest. At, uh, you see it in the Master SAO team. Including scientific director David Buckley, uh, and uh, Alexey Knyazev, Evgeny Garbatskoy, and uh, Oleg Gress. Uh, one of the most input, uh, one of the most highlight, uh, most brightest highlight at Master SAO is the main input to the first historical gravitational wave alert inspection uh, made by Master um, uh, GV 15.9.14. And here you can see the cover map uh, made by our telescopes. We covered more than 5,000 square degrees uh, during <laughs> first weeks. Uh, and uh, you can see the li latest um, error box. LIGA gives full FITS file of uh, probability uh, to find the source. Uh, it was all sky. 
and uh, the later it was all sky uh, during um, all observational period and the most uh, probably map is here it was on the southern hemisphere and one of the transients that we detected there by master auto detection system was supernova that was observed by master and uh, later by master, uh, by salt 10 meters telescope here one of our results uh, master saw take part in GRB observation. Here you can see the image of the first GRB that was detected by Master Sao in December of uh, 14, 14 year. Uh, the limit is 2203 at this Im summary image. And you can see the image of this GRB, optical counterpart of this GRB. Uh, one of the results of Master Sao is spectral polarimetry and photometry of the early afterglow of gamma ray bursts GRB 1925B. Here you see the main optical observation made by Master. From uh, our transients that we discovered there, uh, there were a lot of interesting objects like uh, this polar. It was detected by Master Sao after detection system and then studied by Master by Sao uh, equipment like polars. Here you can see the coverage map during first two years uh, of southern hemisphere by Master Sao. Uh, both telescopes at Canarian Islands and uh, South African Observatory, both master telescopes, took part uh, also in Antares and Ice Cube um, investigation, alerts investigation. Uh, here you can see the diagrams of uh, our pointing uh, after alerts. So as alerts came in uh, any moment, uh, you see that uh, we have uh, a 30% of all alerts that we pointed at first minute. Uh, the delay of two hours or one day uh, connected with uh, the uh, alert coordinates position. And the availability for observation near sunset or near sunrise. It will be more more discussed in one of next talk by Allegres. Here you can see the table with our input to, master, uh, to Antares uh, alerts uh, search by master telescopes, uh, including master SAO. And here you see uh, master input to uh, triplet, uh, ice cube triplet um, 16 uh, 0 to 17. Uh, that was come uh, to Antarctica ice cube detectors and the uh, master covered the most the most uh, error fields and uh, we studied this error box during two months later and for analysis we used also months before the event. Uh, here you see one uh, our field of view of Antares alert where you can see the star Antares, uh, the uh, error box um, of Antares telescope, including uh, the sources uh, found by SWIFT. Uh, during all Blazar's uh, observations in Antares and Ice Cube um, error boxes, uh, we found several uh, events that uh, demonstrates variability in uh, optic uh, near the time of trigger. Uh, Master Sao and Master Ak also took part in uh, 
fast radio boost investigations and uh, for analysis in uh, last day talk by Serge Chisonikov and Vladimir Lipinov, you see the FRB uh, observation, our observation, and uh, uh, the telescope's input. This is also from the last talks. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. We save time. We have uh, time for questions. If there are no other questions, I would like to ask you about slide 20, uh, 20. Ah, okay. Uh, there are some cr uh, plus symbol, uh, blue one. For me, what about meaning of this? Кресты uh, есть. Что это такое? А, это uh, there are optical transients that were discovered during our inspections. They are not uh, connected with gravitational wave events directly, but they are the result of our after detection system work. So as we observed a lot of uh, error fields, we inspected uh, error, uh, all error fields uh, and we uh, report our results. They oh. are not directly connected with gravitational wave, but yes, they are transient. Yes, okay, okay. Because it's because it's probably only one optical transient yes, was yes, connected. In history. So famous transient. Okay. Other questions? If not, let us think speak again. Uh, we, have, we have time for co coffee break. Tea break. <laughs> Damien, do, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, fine. Perfect. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone. Okay. Uh, next speaker is uh, Damien Dornich, uh, multi messenger observations with neutrinos. 30 minutes. Please, okay. go ahead. Okay, so welcome, everyone. Um, and so I will discuss today. Uh, what we have done on the multi-messenger observation with neutrino and mainly with the Antares neutrino telescope. So just to start at a very brief introduction, here is a picture where you have the horizon versus the energy and you see that uh, at a very high energy, the gamma gamma absorption and uh, makes the, the universe completely opaque to uh, high energy radiation and to know what happened to the very high energy uh, universe, universe, you have to use a little messenger with neutrinos. And that's what we will discuss today. So, just a few words about the Antares neutrino telescope, if you are not very familiar. So, it's a neutrino telescope uh, located at 2500. Death in the Mediterranean Sea. In the south of France, we have the France, and it's on the south at 40 kilometers from the shore. And it's composed by a 3D array of uh, less than 1,000 PMT, arranged in 12 vertical lines. And the instrument volume is quite small, it's uh, around 0.01 kilometer. The first line was deployed in early 2006 completed in 2008 and has been ended in 2022. In February this year, we completely removed all the line and now the, the site is clean. The principle of detection is quite easy. When you have a neutrino, it will interact in the, in the crust of Earth or in the, in the sea. It will produce, uh, it will transform in uh, associated lepton, which is relativist, which will produce uh, some Cherikov light and the Cherikov is read by this uh, 3D array of um, automultiplier. So the main characteristic 
typical fantasy. There are two topology of event. Either it's a muon which will produce a, a muon, and the muon will travel around several kilometers and due to the level in an excellent resolution. And in the sea, where you have very low scattering, the resolution can be as good as 0 0.3, 0 degrees. You have also the shower like topology where you have electron neutrino, tau neutrino, and all the neutral current, which will produce a kind of uh, ellipse, a little ellipse where here you have a bit less uh, resol a bit less resolution, but even in the water is okay. If you go to the, just to see Antares is located in the northern hemisphere, but it looks in the southern sky and, and it's mainly looking at the galactic plane. And due to the Earth's rotation, it can cover 75% of, uh, of the sky. The duty cycle of this kind of uh, neutrino telescope, as you, do, you can make them running most of the time, is around 95%. And here, for example, you have uh, what we have in the online. So in the online, I will show you later. We can reconstruct all the events. And typically, the angular resolution is not the best we can do. We can improve uh, in the offline due to the better calibration. And you see that uh, we have around one to two neutrinos per day. So you don't have to forget that this telescope are background dominated. It's clear. It's clear. If you you have the background of the the main background is a cosmic ray which interacts in the atmosphere that produces some uh, muons and the muons will uh, reach the detector and produce an enormous background. And you see that you have around 1 billion to 10 billion uh, muon per year. The other background is where you have a cosmic ray which interacts on the other side of the Earth. And the muon will produce neutrinos. Muon decay will produce neutrinos, and the neutrino can reach the detector. And here you have around 1 million, 1, 100,000. 100,000 to 1 million per year. And finally, we have what we are signal is around 100 to 500 per year in one kilometer cube. So you see that Antares is around one to five per year. So just to put this in the context, here you have the neutrino spectrum. So you have the neutrino spectrum is the energy where you have all the solar neutrino, which are not accessible in, in, to our detector, we have the supernova detector, and our stretch is around there. And the main contribution is on the atmospheric neutrino, where we try to to study the neutrino properties, and on the cosmic neutrino at the, at a, a bit higher energy. And here you have uh, the typical energy range where the um, neutrino, the current neutrino telescope are available on Taras. Cancrinet, Ice Cube, and GVD uh, in the lag by Ken. We have seen the, that there are some high energy nodes, and we have seen them through this flux. And here, for example, there are the lightest uh, Ice Cube uh, studies, where you see, for example, for the through green muon, a, a clear deviation from the background, where we see the, the contribution of the high energy part. The same for this high energy starting track. And we see the same for the Antares, where even if the statistic is a bit low, we start to see a deviation at high energy, clearly showing that uh, there is uh, a, a contribution of high energy neutrino. If you look at uh, the different where we are right now to, to understand this neutrino flux, here you have the um, the properties of this flux, so the normalization versus the spectral index for different analysis, and you see that right now we are we are, we run between two and around three, and uh, so there are quite a lot of uh, things to be done in the future, and especially to understand if there is a galactic component and if there are in the south and the north. On the individual neutrino sources, here we have, we so far we have no firm detection. We have no five sigma detection, but quite a lot of evidence, so around two to three sigma of several uh, potential neutrino sources. We have quite a lot of blazers, so you know, all is a TXS of five or six, where we have uh, an association between one ice cube neutrino and, uh, and a, a blazer flare. 
we have this this one the yeah the, the, the same the PKS, uh, you, you see that you have quite a lot of uh, of sources where we are a kind of uh, either directional uh, correlation or directional in time. If it's only a directional correction, it's around two sigma. If it's a directional plus time, it's around three sigma. And and so and we have also one nice study by by a Russian colleague on the correlation between the radio blazer and the high, high energy neutrino between uh, ice cube and Antares. So we have one one event which could be very, very interesting, is one association with the Safer Galaxies NGC 1068 at three level. And we have this association with the description event. This uh, two uh, event correlate, seems to correlate uh, with uh, two ice cube neutrino. But we don't have a clear answer right now on the main content of the source population to explain the diffuse threat. We can say that we are we are reaching the top of the iceberg, but we know that the, many, many more sources to be done. So clearly one one uh, difficulties on the Newton telescope is the statistic, which is very low. You have seen that in one kilometer cube, you have uh, around 100 uh, events in the full sky to study. And what what we want to do is to optimize this neutrino, and for this is to do some multi-messenger uh, alert. So either we have uh, one neutrino with a given uh, chance to be cosmic, and we want to alert the community to send uh, an alert and to do some rapid uh, follow-up. It's like, for example, it takes me. And some what we do in our side is when we heard that there is, uh, for example, a blazer which is flaring, or there is a supernova or gamma ray burst, we look in our data to try to find a correlation quickly, so that if there is something, we try we try to maximize this coincidence. And what this um, observation will do is we will and then refine the detection made by the single messenger, probe the source dynamic and population, even the absence of signal, and identify the neutrino sources. So the principles are quite simple. Uh, we have, uh, for example, in Antares, we have uh, such a system implemented in 2009. IceCube is a bit uh, one year uh, before. And this program is simple. We have all the data which arrive in real time in the short station. In the short station, we do the we do the, the reconstruction. We, we trigger to find some alert. We send a message a couple of seconds to optical telescope. The optical telescope uh, takes on an image, and we try to find the optical counterpart. So the neutrino alert, so our system is in tattoo, and we have four uh, neutrino alert, one in this high energy sample, which is around 5 TeV, so you see that is a bit low, and we have we know that there is a uh, quite significant uh, contribution of uh, atmospheric neutrino. Some very high energy, around 30 TV, where the, con the atmospheric neutrino contamination is a bit lower. And we have some directional trigger. Here has been introduced. It's when we have a neutrino which is uh, associated to a local galaxy uh, direction, a bit less than 20 megaparsec. And here it was mainly introduced to enhance the chance to detect a local uh, core collapse supernova. And we have uh, some multiplet trigger. So what we provide is we provide a p-value, which means what is the probability to be a cosmic signal, and we send the alert in a, typically what we do is all the process I show you in the last slide is typically take six to seven seven. And this is a this is a PSF of the Antares telescope. And so this is a two degree by two degree. So the the size of a master uh, is uh, is two times this one, and the little circle are the the, the, the size of the Swift um, XRT, and we send the alert in the, in the GCN format. So our optical partner. So we have started this program uh, originally with optical partner because so you know all. all that uh, these uh, robotic telescopes are quite accessible and uh, and they can cover and uh, react very quickly. And so we start the program with the Taro in 2009. A bit later, we start with ROTSI, which fortunately ended in 2014. And 
at this time we we switched to master and so has been a huge follow up uh, from 2015 to to now and uh, in later we had also some uh, mainly for testing so the optical telescope was well in china and you see that you have a nice coverage of of all the world and this coverage are quite interesting. And even if we are looking at the northern hemisphere, so if you look at this map, it means the, the probability to follow in real time an alert. So of course, Antares is located there. It's, if you look at the antipod, you have around 30% of, uh, of probability to follow an alert. So this means that because you have 50% you of the, the day and night and the last 20% percent are mainly due to the, the bad weather. But then in the northern hemisphere, you see that telescopes on the northern hemisphere have the quite large probability to follow the Antares alert, even if, if, if uh, we are mainly looking for south. And so the green point are the master telescope, the blue point are the Taro and the, and the pair the, uh, of the Roti. We have also some uh, some partners from other uh, wavelengths. So we have mainly for the satellite Swift and Integral for the X-ray to Gamma. To very high energy, we are working with S and with the radio, making with this uh, Murchison Wide Field Array, which is uh, low energy, low um, low, wa low wavelengths around the 100 megahertz radio facilities. So why we want to do so, this multi-messenger and to study the, all the facilities. So here you have uh, the SED, so the spectral energy distribution for TXS, uh, where you have the energy versus uh, wavelength, and you know you recognize uh, the well-known two-bump structure of all this uh, for, for, for typically for a blazer, but it's applied also to different uh, sources, and where you have uh, Dash is a key and in, uh, in, in the main line is when you have uh, some steering and you see that optical uh, are quite interesting because you have a quite large variation and so and they are easy to access. You have the, the X-ray and X-ray are very important because they are very clean sky. They program some nice trigger and they fix the magnetic field by the the magnetic field and the density of the medium, and so you can you cannot overshoot uh, the X-ray. For example, if you if you do some proton synchrotron, you cannot have a very large uh, magnetic field. Otherwise, you will overshoot the X-ray. Gamma ray are, are associated to the to the neutri to the neutrino, so they are quite natural link, and radio is are because they are the nice tracer of the region. So a bit of statistics. So since mid 2009 to uh, to end of last year, we have sent around 300 alerts. So 70 has been followed within 24 hours. So that's what we call early. The main limitation to why we have not 100% uh, is the bad weather and the direction of um, under the telescope horizon and uh, the, if it's too close to the sun, to the moon, or to the galactic plane. We have, Typically here you have the distribution of the delay between the first image and the neutrino, and you see that you have one bump where the telescopes are accessible in real time, and you you can you can be as good as a few tens of seconds, and that, that's uh, where, when you have to wait that the telescope or the weather uh, is better. So what are the main results of the follow-up? So for the from, from follow-up, clearly the main target was the, the gamma ray burst. And here, that's why we wanted to have an observation as, a, as fast as possible. And in 2009-10, when we started, gamma ray burst were the, one of the best candidates to find some neutrino. And what we have done, and we didn't find any counterpart associated, which look at the gamma ray burst afterglow light curve. And here, for example, you have the magnitude versus the time. So you, remember, you recognize in gray the typical afterglow line. And we have put some limits and we arrive light, uh, quite early. You can all exclude 
every event there was a gamma rebirth at uh, at the origin of the of the event. For so for the long term follow up here, what there are two main targets. One, the first one was the supernova, and and so that's why we we do a follow up for regularly uh, during the following months. And here we didn't find any supernova and. Also, at the, at the time of the process, uh, hidden jet in core collapse supernova were quite f quite popular to explain the difference of population between the core collapse supernova and the gamma reburst. And we have put quite a lot of constraint on this model, and there are very few remaining uh, space parameters. And the other part is uh, AGN, but this I will not speak about it because I think probably Oleg Gras will uh, discuss uh, this uh, AGN, uh, the possible AGN uh, for a counterpart in, uh, in this talk. We have done some radio, uh, very high energy, but yeah, we found some sources, but not are associated with Neutri. So the best, the best case is. Uh, is this one where we have a multi wavelength follow up of this alert? So, this alert was a quite high energy trigger and it has been followed by SWIFT, MASTER, and S, so typically around a few, few hours after. And we didn't, what we found is if you look here, you have uh, the, the position of, the, position of the, the neutrino with the error, and it was for the funny st story, close to the entire star and the global cluster, we found an X-ray sources and you have the profile of the X-ray sources and, uh, and it was quite interesting to have this uh, kind of flaring up, but at the end it reveals that this, the multi-wavelength uh, follow-up and maybe the, the if, uh, classify this um, bright star as uh, active star and it's unlikely uh, related to uh, the neutrino emission. So for the last thing, let me discuss about what we do in the future. So that's the neutrino. Now we have a ice cube and Paris has been, and OG at very high energy and we, we, are, we are moving that, that our future moving on the neutrino side, on the Mediterranean side, what to do is the kind of uh, follow up here. So it's mainly having the Amazon with a reasonable instrumented volume. That is a strategy of kind of I assume we will follow the intensity frontier, so having the last zoom, so that uh, doing uh, having the statistics and uh, at uh, very energy, it's uh, energy frontier where you, you have some uh, radio telescope made to uh, track cosmogenic neutrino. So I will talk about what we are doing in cancer. So climate neutrino infrastructure are two sites, one in close to us, so Antares was there, and it's Orca for the low energy part, and Arca, which is on the south of Sicily, between Sicily and Malta. And, the, and here are the main characteristics. So that's this, exactly the same technology. We use a line of individual module, optical module. So the optical module is composed of 31 small phototube. And what changes is only the distance between the, the optical module and the density. And with these two sites, we can cover a very extended region from MEV to PEV. We have a full sky co coverage. We have a high duty cycle and we can do uh, quite a lot of uh, high, uh, uh, all flavor neutrino detection. And the best, uh, per, one thing before, wh where we are right now in the news. So Orca has around 10 line uh, working in operation, 10% of the detector, which is deployed more or less. And we are where we have uh, run a bit more than one year of data, one or two years of data. And here we have already better performance at low energy. And we have Publish the first result on oscillation. And uh, we are in continuous construction and uh, we will have around seven lines more uh, by the end of the year. So, ARCA, the high energy, so there are 19 strings in operation and you see the footprint there. And we have a, around one year of uh, day. Here we have uh, with the uh, 90 string, we have three times the uh, XRS. And uh, by the end of the year, we will 
we had the uh, and so we have the beta horizon and the kind of CVT to the Zanantalas. So here where we have uh, quite a lot of uh, made quite a lot of progress is on the angular resolution and on the on the track, for example, for very high energy, we can go below 0 0.1 degree, typically around 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 degree, and for very, very high energy neutrino, we can go even better. For Orca at low energy, here we are limited by the kinematics between the neutrino and the and the muons, and here is around uh, one to two degrees, uh, but we have a quite a large statistics. So we can study very well some, some low energy neutrino, uh, for example, on the sun, on the supernova, on novae, and stuff like this. For the, for the cascade channel, here, well, we have a, we will gain uh, an angular resolution which can be go around 1.5 to 1 1 degrees for very high energy event and at low energies are the same so our, here is our interface for the online and the external world so uh, as i'm running late i will uh, I will just briefly. So we have an external uh, trigger uh, reception, for example, for the GCN, for all other brokers, where we filter them and we process them in real time. And if there is uh, an association, we send back uh, an automatic response to the GCN, alerting that we have a one neutrino. And we have some alert sending, which we use uh, only now. It's only done with a VO event. And with the comet broker to send uh, to broadcast our alert, and the alert will be public uh, for country. So one uh, first intriguing association we have done with Chemsrinet and other neutrino telescope is this PKS0735. Uh, this is Bazar, where we have one uh, ice cube alert. Uh, which has been associated with uh, one flare of uh, this uh, blazer. And GVD also report one cascade event uh, associated. You see you have uh, the ice cubes, the uh, GVD, and can three that will find one neutrino and also back some at a very low energy. And so if you look at this, uh, this event has been is already is uh, being studied and you see that this event happened uh, in um, well, early this year and uh, so we are com doing the computation of the uh, association probability but it look a bit more like TXS. and so what we do for the alert so right now what that's what we are doing so we we do some alert neutrino classifier astro classif neutrino classifier so we only on the neutrino properties and then we generate an alert and we do afterward the correlation with the catalog light curve and alert. So now what we are doing and what we are implementing right now is to do the, the neutrino classification and the astro classification at the same time so that we can have a combined um, selection and sending and sending the alert so that's exactly what we are doing so in the alert you will have the typical information but also some astro content uh, where you will get uh, what the sources are uh, if the sources has been uh, has been found uh, in uh, in association with uh, some promising sources we will uh, try to also to add the time for example with this lsst and ztf uh, follow-up and on so on so on the radio. So that's what we are doing. And so I will conclude. Uh, so now we have a solid measurement of the diffuse flux by S cube and Antares, and we are touching the top of the eye for individual neutrino sources, and on the Zap, but also on the TD and so. so we have a new neutrino that which are arriving. GVD has uh, now uh, is the largest neutrino telescope in the northern hemisphere, and CanSrinet is is uh, also reaching uh, quite similar sensitivity. And clearly what what is the key on this system is this multi-wavelength and multi-messenger follow-up to reserve the neutrino source, mainly by, because we have a too few statistics. And, uh, what, and to finish, I, I, I want to take this occasion to, uh, to address a warm thanks to the master team for the intense work with impressive uh, responsibility and efficiency.
and I will stop you. We have time for questions. Vladimir Mikhailovich. Damir, uh, this is <laughs> I'm Vladimir Lipolov. I would like to ask you what is your opinion about the last very interesting neutrino events which detected third neutrino uh, neutrino telescopes at the January maybe no December December last year maybe yes three yeah, uh, this one the, yes what is your your opinion of this uh, I am sorry if you say before but now I no, uh, it's quite intriguing that we found an asso this association of all the neutrino telescopes. For, so for chem 3 the probability that this uh, neutrino is cosmic is very low. It's only 10%. And uh, slowly, 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 uh, the probability yeah. is, is not that, uh, for each individual telescope, the probability is low. But for... Uh, 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 yes, I, I see. Because, because we have the simultaneous, simultaneous optical observation, yeah. where yeah. we see yeah. three, uh, uh, during the three points, points and we see very really interesting optical radiation. Okay, so I think for me it looks like the TXS. So if you trust the TXS, you can you should trust this one. Thank okay. you. Okay, other questions? If not, let us think. Okay, again. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, next speaker is Alec Gress. Probably also distant. Олег Анатольевич, вы загружаете презентацию? У него красненько горит, он, наверное, не включил микрофон даже. Олег Анатольевич, а... нет, включить мы не можем. Вот, включился. Надо, надо эту, эту презентацию, по-видимому, отключить, он не может. Минуточку, я загружаюсь, тут что-то идет процесс пока. Он не пустит, пока вы не уберете. Нет, нет, пустит, все нормально. Все нормально, по-твоему? Не с нашей стороны проблемы. А убрать нельзя? Вот так вот. Да не надо, не надо. А вы с Байкал подписали соглашение? Байкал? Байкал. А, не умеет, они обрабатывать не могут онлайн. А? Не умеет он быстро обрабатывать, да? Ну, он умеет, вот этот один, он один Байкал. Угу. Но мы уже знали, что как бы, это ну, не, не, не независимо. Они представили невидимость в Понятно. В этих нейтринах я видел 150 тысяч в год. Угу. Вот. А они там стопку вложили. Ну, все понятно. Ну, как он? Понятно. Как 
кажется, я готов. Окей, okay, go ahead. You could start your presentation. Окей, okay, thank you very much. <coughs> This is my message. Молчант, search of astrophysical, search F ultra high energy, high energy neutrinos, dedicated to multi-channel studies of astro astrophysical source high energies in the universe on the robotic telescope of the master of so global network, in particular. Neutrino multiplet, uh, IS cube uh, 16, uh, 0, 2, 17. Error fields of neutrino alerts from Antares detectors possible candidates for the sources and a few words uh, the study of the energy spectrum of primary cosmic rays at the Tunka U133 and Tiger High Score facility. <coughs> In the Ice cube experiment, the magnitude of the astrophysical neutrino flux were determined and the required level of the sensitivity was understood. Master has been inspected ice cube neutrino alert since April 2016. There are currently 121 events and in addition to these events, there are 11 events in retraction. Shown here are the arrival direction of ice cube neutrino events since April 2016. Here the times of registrations of neutrino alerts from 2016 to the present are presented by blue dots. The triangle is the neutrino triplet. Uh, the uh, is the triplet position in time. The star is the famous blazar TXE 0506 and some more blazars that have been suggested from Fermi TSR as possible sources. It is interesting to understand the stability and intensity of the arrival of alerts over time. The graph on the left is the high height of arrival of neutrino events dependent of the equatorial coordinates. On average, the height lie in the range from zero to minus 40 degrees. The graph at the top right is the distribution of the error radia and the directions of arrival of alerts. This is an, is an average of one uh, from one to two degree in average. The graph at the bottom right is the distribution of time intervals for the arrival of events. So we have a stream of alerts about one events per 12 days. On February 17, 2016, the Cube Neutrino Observatory detected a neutrino triplet in 19 hour 21 minutes universal time from the from one area of и if errors in determine the location of the source, у which arrive to within 100 seconds with energy f 0.3, 1.1 and 0.5 tera electron volt respectively. A random neutrino triplet event is expected once every about 13 years. For technical reasons, the message about the alert came to electromagnetic support group a day later. The slide shows an image snapshot from the master of the triplet inspection area, uh, second location of the three neutrino candidates, and third, master coverage map of the error fields of the triplet. Since the master telescope service the entire sky uh, constantly, the over image of this area before the alerts. Seven observations participated in the observation to search for possible source of the neutrino triplet. Master's optical observations, 110 square degrees taken 
а 53 times у 60 days. After the trigger, это не лазит у 60 days before the trigger. Almost 17,000 square degrees у В не лазит. All possible variable sources UV analyzed, selected by masters, automatic software as well as candidates proposed by the SWIFT group and Blazar from the Fermi catalog. Here is a graph of the limiting stellar magnitude dependent on the time of observation, given a limit on the brightness of a possible source of neutrino alert. The observation period cover uh, 60 days with a brightness limit of a possible source of about 18, 20 magnitude. In particular, no transient sources were found in the optical and gamma bands. Optical ob observation are sufficient no rule out a nearby cocalip supernova. However, in such a large area of uncertainty, if the arrival of the triplet radius 3.6 degree, a fairly large number of different transients are found in astronomical databases. Despite this, an optical source directly related, directly related to the neutrino event has not been identified. It should be noted that at the moment, Antares, Baksan, and Baikal GVD neutrino alerts, as well as Amon alerts, are not detected in the triplet field. Antares telescope. The Antares neutrino telescope operated continually from 28 to February uh, 2022 years. Shown here are the arrival direction of Antares neutrino events since February 2015 year, which had alert and inspection observations on the master telescope. This slide shows a graph of the times of registrations of neutrino alerts from 15 to 21 years. During this period, we have uh, 2,000 Antares neutrino events. The graph on the left in the high is the high of the arrival of neutrino event dependent on the equatorial coordinates. The graph at the top right is the distribution of time intervals for the arrival of events. Those we have Antares neutrino flux about one event in 10 days. The graph at the bottom right in the distribution of heights of arrival of neutrino events. Major events with altitude of minus uh, 40 degrees or less with the expectation of a small portion near horizontal events, apparently atmospheric neutrinos. This area. On the master telescopes, studies were carried out to search for the variability of Lazar at time close to Antares triggers for the period from 4 to uh, 21 years. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, graph the left, diagram of the pointed speed of master telescopes. The beginning of alert observation, first exposition time start from the trigger time. Approximately one third of all events master began to investigate to within one minute from the moment of the trigger. The graph on the right is an illustration of the distribution of objects that are located in the error field of neutrino events Antares, radius point 0 0.7 degree. A large number of quasar and agents in the diagram is due to fact that some alerts, about a dozen, come from the region containing up to a dozen or more quasar in the search area with a radius of uh, 0.7 degrees. <coughs> On 
Он замастер телескоп Стадис Уэ Карик Аут Засеч Фозе Вариабилити в Блазар A Times Close to Antares Trigger For the period from 4 to 21 years The table lists The 20 most probable High energy neutrino events Candidates Identified as Blazar A at a distance F dist From the corresponding alert Significant optical Variability was found For three Blazars This slide provides information on the result of the search for object variability in the master and Gaia database, the respective candidates and the light curves. An interesting case in the location of neutrino alerts, five red circles at the picture, And other objects in the vicinity of the Centaurus A galaxy in a region with a search radius of up to 8 degree from the center of the galaxy. This table lists the 21 most probable very high energy neutrino events. For each neutrino alert, a specific master telescope is indicates which started the inspection with the time delay, destinated delay, and received the first frame with the MLIM limit value. Blazars as possible candidates for neutrino source have not been discovered in the vicinity of the neutrino alerts. The graph on the right is a sky map of the arrival of these neutrinos. The most interesting cases are marked in the box, namely, According to Gaia, the object Gaia 17 CBA brightens by four magnitudes to 16 magnitudes in seven hours after the trigger at a distance of uh, about uh, 0.55 degrees from the center of the most likely direction of the alert. This object experiences it a short-term increase in brightness at a later time as well. Two years before the Antares alert uh, 18025, this another alert was registered from the direction Antares 16 427 at a distance F0.76 degree from the first one. In this region, this neutrino, this. In this region of the sky, many active objects are found at F gamma sources, Fermi gamma sources of unknown nature, pulsars, and supernova remnants. Conclusion for this uh, story, the discovery of ultra-high energy cosmic rate indicates the existence of powerful space accelerators, interactions of very high energy cosmic rays with matter radiation in astrophysical source leads to the formation of gamma radiation high energy neutrinos. How a neutrino installation cannot yet provide an accurate estimate of the direction of neutrino arrival at not sensitive enough to detect point source with multiple events. Multi-message neutrino astronomy is an exciting new area of research where it is necessary to accumulate new observatory data, possibly with increased localization accuracy and sensitivity. Did you finish? The main thing is that the master simultaneously examines all kinds of alert coming from the GCN automatically. Therefore, the master has a very definite, very way, definite way as a central schedule poster on the right and the observation strategy, strategy, strategy for different types of alert poster in the center.
the main factor for the effective registration of selected phenomena are in short and consistently distributed identical equipment, robotization of specific observations, robotization of distributed equipment, identification of all objects and selection of ones. Here is a map of optical transient discovered by Master for the period from 5 April to 22 uh, August. Among other things, as a result of alerts and inspection observation, Master has discovered of comets and potentially dangerous asteroids. It should be noted that almost all robotic telescopes of the Master Observatory took part in discovery, have discovery priority, of these moving celestial, celestial bodies. We have research area uh, of the neutrino uh, alert of uh, about 10 square degree in case of inspection of neutrino alerts. With rare inspections, master does not detect a variable optical counterpart of uh, neutrino events. In the case of inspection observation of the area of gravitation wave events of all three epoch of the observations from 15 to 21, we have very large viewer, viewing areas in the process of searching for the, cosmic, of the source of gravita gravitational waves from hundreds to several thousand degrees. Naturally, in the process of observing the region of gamma, uh, gamma uh, gravitational wave events, uh, Master discovered uh, dwarf, dwarf novae and other types of cataclysmic variables. In case gamma ray burst inspection by Master, for example, gamma ray burst lasting 100 seconds to with a complex multipeak structure. 50 seconds after the trigger, master observes this burst in the optics with a magnitude of 15 uh, magnitude. The burst had a redshift of uh, 2.33. And few words about the uh, Taiga Gamma Observatory. You can see um, Irkut River in the, at this slide, uh, and uh, small white uh, point is uh, Tun Master Tunka uh, localization. Uh, rest area is uh, location of uh, Taiga Gamma Observatory. <coughs> Taiga Gamma Observatory takes first steps to integrate an approach to the study of high energy gamma quanta and cosmic rays. The image of the left is the Taiga Haiskora White Angle Cherenkov Station, further in the depth the Cherenkov Shaw Image Telescope, Image and Atmospheric Cherenkov Telescope. The image on the right is the location of uh, 120 station, about 120 station, and uh, YACT's uh, atmospheric Cherenkov telescope at present time on the area of 3 square kilometer. The joint use of installations of different types will allow, with good accuracy, to determine the parameters FNR shower, gamma or hadron shower. The image on the right is the energy spectrum of primary cosmic rays, its structure, obtained from the registration of uh, uh, 
14 million air show our eight ESF observations. Energy, energy range uh, is uh, from 1 to 1,000 at electron volt. The image on the left is, a, is an image in atmospheric arc telescope camera image of a gamma-like shower. Image on the right here is a preliminary result of the observation crop nebula, crop nebula with a single telescope at a threshold detection energy of about 4 teraelectron volt. This about near zero alpha is uh, presence uh, source from Kraft Nebula. The fine structure of the energy spectrum of all particles, cosmic ray, indicates a shape a change in the slope of the spectrum at energies uh, about uh, uh, 3 peta electron volt and uh, 300 peta electron volts. So, uh, my conclusion <coughs> about my talk, and I stop my story. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. We have time for questions. No questions. Let us thank speaker again. And last speaker is uh, Kirill Zhirkov. I do not see him. Может, вы можете позвонить? Наверняка у вас есть телефон. Мобильный телефон, все молодые люди. Не знаю. Yeah. Молодые люди все носят телефон. Yeah, yeah. Могут что-то не найти, а телефон носят. Давайте. Без, да ничего, без протокола, потому что отвечающего нет. Кому вопрос? Он исчез уже. А. What, what about observation of occultation of the star by asteroid Daphne in 1916. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, our result, which have been published in Astronomical Journal in 1916. Как вы думаете, он слышит, нет? Слышен, да, вопрос был. Да. Да, про Дафну, я извиняюсь, немножко суть не понял. Повторите, пожалуйста. Хорошо, значит, я спрашивал, по-моему, вы не упомянули наш совместный результат, полученный в результате наблюдения из Тунки, покрытия звезды астероидом Дафна, который был опубликован в Astronomical Journal 1916-2016. Да, спасибо за вопрос, я извиняюсь, но я тут привел краткую сводку о вновь открытых или переоткрытых. Это вот, данная тема немножко в тему моего доклада не входила, специфику моей работы. Конкретный, непосредственно, я извиняюсь. Владимир Михайлович, что будем делать? Спасибо. Мы не можем.
двигать время не, не, сюда, все. потому что да я... они будут выступать мексиканцы, они раньше шести. Да я, ну, я понимаю. Ну, больше шести, ну, ну так что, закрывай? Ну подожди, я звоню. Он может, он звонил. Может, если он... На, на... Бежит? Он что говорит? Вот он пришел. А вот. Я, я, я хочу сказать, однажды приехал, я по-русски скажу рассказ, из моей, моего опыта. Была конференция, организованная Лугуновым в Протвино. И председательствующий, его заместитель по теоретическому отделу, значит, ну, вел заседание. И японец, из Японии приехал специально, доклад 30 минут. Он опоздал на 25 минут. И когда 4 минуты прошло в докладе, председатель сказал, все. И войск говорит, как же так, я же со всеми обедал, это не важно. Так что он говорил 4 минуты. Он ехал, ехал через столько морей и прочее. Он говорил только 4 минуты. Вот, кстати, Кирилл Танимич. Окей. Hello everyone, I am Kirill Zurkov from Master Team, and I will talk about the search for blazers candidates into high-end neutrino sources. So, neutrino astronomy is a relatively young science and is mostly dedicated to the research of astrophysical neutrinos. Before 2013, the only examples of such astrophysical neutrinos were the neutrinos from the Sun and from the same famous supernova 1987A. However, after 2013, Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory announced the detection of high-end neutrinos of unknown origin. They were deemed astrophysical neutrinos. This detection led to many theories discussing possible sources of such neutrinos. The most prominent ones of them featured active galactic nuclei, gamma ray bursts, tidal disruption events, galaxy clusters, and so on. However, attempts at confirming these theories were fruitless until 2017 when the first plausible connection between the high neutrino event and an, and, an astrophysical, and, an, and an astrophysical object was established. This was high neutrino event ice cube 1709.22a and the flaring blazer TXS to 506 plus 056. In 2018, a team of scientists from ice cube, Fermi Lat and other observatories published a paper about this association. On the 22nd of September of 2017, IceCube detected a high energy neutrino event with an energy of approximately 300 tera electron volts. Several days after the event, a gamma ray observatory Fermi Lats reported on the detection of a flaring blazer that was located right at the middle of the neutrino's error box. It was blazer TXS 0506. Several days after this, and this report, other gamma ray observatories such as Magic, Vertis, and Hess uh, reported on the on the reported on the flare in very high energy gamma ray band. And other observatories followed up with their observations, and it was found that the blazer was sliding in every electromagnetic band. As well as that, the blazer had an interesting variability in very high energy gamma ray band. Using statistical analysis, authors rejected chance of a random coincidence at three sigma level, which is not enough for a definitive association, but enough for a plausible association. Uh, following this, there were many attempts at establishing other association between astrophysical objects and between events. However, there was a problem. Despite the fact that there were many theories about uh, possible neutrino sources, Majority of them only discuss the possible neutrino production, not how this neutrino production makes, makes itself visible in uh, other electromagnetic bands. So to find plausible connections, you need to have a very large sample of, of observations to find some hints at neutrino production. 
Fortunately, we at Master Team have such a sample. Let me remind you what is a master network. It is a network of nine 40 centimeter robotic telescopes dispersed all over the world with, from the mountains of Argentina to the forests of Siberia. Every telescope have, has a two degree field of vision, has an identical software and hardware, and is capable of automatically observing any part of the sky within one minute. Uh, since, uh, as Ali Grass said, since uh, 2016, IceCube Neutrino Observatory published 112 public, public alerts on the neutrino events. Of them, Master observed 87 in the first day. And despite the fact that it's un not really known what astrophysical object uh, produces neutrinos, we choose blazers as the most probable ones of them. And so we use Roma BZ Cut as the blazer catalog. Uh, from this catalog, we only analyze blazers which are located in the 99.9% .9 localization error box, which is approximately twice the size of the original error box. Of these 77 observations, there were, there were 157 blazers that were imaged by master telescopes. However, we have to ask a question. On what basis do we count a blazer as a candidate source? To answer this, let us turn to the two most likely sources of neutrinos, blazers TXS-506 and blazer PKS-0506. No, so, blazer TXS-506 is a candidate source of ice cube 17092A. Probability of astrophysical origin 56%. And on the bottom of the slide, you can see three frames. The left one was made a week before the event. The middle one was made several minutes after the event. And the right one was made two hours after the event. In the middle of the, each frame, you can see a blazer, which is highlighted by these two lines. On the middle frame, you can clearly see that this blazer, for some unknown reason, is dimmer than two hours later. On the slide cap, you can see it more clearly, this unknown decay in brightening. Ampli amplitude of this brightening is approximately 0 0.8 magnitude. Uh, here we can see a light graph of the blazer using every master data across the years. And you can clearly see the flare. Second property candidate is the KS of 735 and neutrino event ice cube 291208A. Energy of the neutrino is approximately 200 tera electron volts, probability of astrophysical origin 50%, and it is a, a historical event. It is the first neutrino event that was detected by several neutrino observatories. Ice cube, Baksan underground scintillation telescope, Michael Gavade, and ARCA, successor of Antares. The first message about this blazer being the possible candidate was made by master team. And as it was found in follow-up of the observations, it showed flare in every electromagnetic band. Once again, three frames. The left one made two months before the event, the right one one day after the event, and the third half a year after the event. You can clearly see the flare here compared to these two frames. Now two light cars. Light curves were made using data from two projects, ASAS-SN and Master. And Master. Master is colored blue, while ASAS colored as a teal. You can cl clearly see the flare and some very interesting decay between the detections by BUST, Ice Cube, and by Calgavada. BUST is highlighted by the orange line while the detection by S cube is red line. Here we can see more clearly this uh, decay. Um, amplitude of this decay is approximately 0 0.4 magnitude. And you can clearly see that this blazer showed an optical flare, as well as, as a significant variability and level of several hours near this neutrino event. So, uh, based on these two blazers, we can use two signals of a blazer being candidate into the source. It is an optical flare 
and the significant variability on the level of several hours. If it shows, if the blazer shows two of these signals simultaneously, we deem it a strong candidate. If it only shows an optical flare, we deem it a weak candidate. And we found three strong candidates and four weak ones. The first candidate is ice PKS of 426-308 and ice cube 1905-04A. This event is from the southern hemisphere and unfortunately, energy and probability of, of its astrophysical origin are unknown. And the candidate is weak. Here you can see a frame two days after the event and the frame two years after the event. You can clearly see the flare after the event. Uh, light curves made using data, data from two projects, Master and Atlas. You can clearly see the flare and uh, steady bright brightening 100 days before the event. Peak brightness of the blazer was 16.2 magnitude. Unfortunately, we do not detect any significant variability right after the event. The second candidate, PKS 2354 02 and ice cube event 20 or 523a. Energy of the event 100 teraelectron volts, prob probability of astrophysical origin 25%. And the candidate is weak. Uh, this frame was made in the same day as the event, and this one was made half a year after the event, and you can clearly see the flare. A light graph of the event, red line is detection by ice cube. And the light curve is made using data from two observatories, Master OAF, which is located in Argentina, and Master SAO, located in South Africa. You can clearly see the flare that is coinciding with the detection and a steady decline after the event. Peak of brightness, approximately 18 magnitude. The third candidate, TXS 0239 plus 175, and ice cube 2911125A. Energy of the event, approximately 100 electron volts, probability of astrophysical origin 39%, and the candidate is weak. The left frame made, was made three years after, before the event, the right one, one day after the event. Once again, a flare. This like effort made using data from three observatories, Master Kislovodsk, located in Caucasus, Master Tavrida, located in Crimea, and Master Amur, located near Bagovetsk. Once again, a flare, for some reason it was, the main peak was approximately a month after the uh, intern event and the steady decline. Peak brightness is 17.3 magnitude. Another candidate, OT081 and ice cube 220303A. This candidate is a strong one. Energy of the event is 400 teraelectron volts, probability of astrophysical origin 70%. The left frame was made three and a half years before the event, the middle one five days after the event, and the right one 25 days after the event. You can clearly see the flare, which is exceptionally bright. Uh, two light curves made using data from six observatories. You can clearly see the frame compared to the historical level and a steady decline after the event. However, this decline was dotted by several brightenings, mini flares. Here, here, and here. Amplitude of this flare is approximately 0 0.4 magnitude. And the last candidate, TXS 0742 minus 078, and ice cube 220425A. Energy of the event approximately 600 teraelectron volts, Probability of astrophysical origin 17% and the candidate is weak. Unfortunately, this event is located in the galactic plane, so the effect of galactic extinction is exceptionally strong in this one. The left train was made three and a half years before the event, the middle one approximately three days after the event, and you can clearly see the flare. Oh, light curves made by using data from three observatories, a flare compared to the archival data, and you can see this, this flare. Flare and the steady decline. Peak brightness is 16.8 magnitude, and galactic extinction 
at these coordinates is 2.5 magnitudes. Taking into account this galactic extinction, you can find that this blazer has the same brightness as TXS 0506 and PKS 0735, which is unexpected. So, we have found seven blazer candidates into high energy dinner sources among the 157 that we checked. The brightness of these candidates was as following. Three had brightness at the level of 14, 15 magnitude, one had at the level of 16 magnitude, and three at the level of 16, 17, and 18 magnitude. Uh, this brightness is not, it's not corrected for the galactic extinction. We can clearly see that half of these blazers were quite bright, which is surprising. Uh, a lot of blazers are, reverse, are reversely dim. However, to estimate a number of, of the number of sources connected to neutrinos, we need to determine a rate of background blazer flares, which is possible through the analysis of GRB observations, and which we have already done. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Please. What is the rate of blazer flares on the sky, for example, per day? Mm, it is hard to say. We didn't find a temporal rate. We found a rate among the blazers, i.e., how many blazers are flaring among the, those that don't flare. Oh, yeah. And how many blazers are flaring? Blazers are flaring. Can I say it? <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> ah, okay. And uh, the connected question is uh, what the chance probability of the coincidence of the blazer flare <laughs> and, uh, and the neutrino event? I guess I can't say once again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Classified information. <laughs> spy, spy. <laughs> but it's just, just one naive question. You know, uh, when uh, Antares representative showed, uh, you did not see it, but, no, but, but probably you could imagine that is if you source in northern hemisphere, and for instance, uh, Ice cube detected some event. Mm -hmm. It's neutrino is the most probable source of ultra high energy because there is a shower. So it's, it's uh, but if, uh, for instance, GVD Baikal detector uh, detected something from no, in northern hemisphere, it may be source of, uh, let us say, some noise, uh, ultra um, high energy cosmic, co cosmic rays. Mm -hmm. So Sometimes probably that is a problem or not. You understand? If, for instance, uh, uh, Ice Cube is a good detector for northern hemisphere, mm -hmm. but vice versa, uh, Baikal detector is a good detector from southern hemisphere. But if, you, for instance, they are saying something about their hemisphere, it may be some, let us yes, say, cosmic that's... ray. Mm -hmm. So some particles, uh, high energy particles, could uh, initiate like showers or something like this. Yes. You mean triplet event? Yes, yes. For instance, also in this. This might be good science. It's an answer. Okay. Let us. Well, it is very likely that there are three. Who are interested? It is случайly. There is such a noise that you always can find. Ты скажи, что они из одного направления пришли или нет? Вот эти три лет. Не знаешь? One direction. Честный человек. Три лет из шестнадцатого года? Как там двенадцатого? Вот это там где три сорня. А, который? Well, they did came from one direction, but written from the source, so it may just be a cosmic ray. Ah, okay, 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 good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Vlad Vladimir Michal, Vladimir Michal, по программе вопрос. Uh, у Окнянского 50 минут доклада. Сейчас? Верно? Нет, не сейчас, а потом. Это верно? 
Это вряд ли, но мы это все исправим потом. Ребят, по поводу проблемы я как объявил в перерыве, что в 18.00 до 20.00 невозможно сделать раньше. Почему? Потому что ну, это Мексика, а мы... и у них и так будет примерно 8 часов утра. А мы не будем раньше. Вот, поэтому сегодня у нас другая задача. Как можно затянуть по большему времени? Но сейчас обед начальник. Да, начальник, да, по-моему. А я ровно до трех. А там...